What is that? A an ice americano? Yeah, an americano. It's just a okay. double shot espresso. Are you, from, are you drinking right out of your fucking press? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just taking in all that grit too. I, I just made it. I just I was I was rushing to make it, and I had to let it steep. So I fucking. Are you still, are you still boycotting Starbucks for what they did to you with that mug? No, I've been going every day. I get, I got over it. Oh, okay, good for you. I can't. I I'm can't. I can't boycott Starbucks, man. It's my place. Oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I literally spend all my money there. It's my too. Way. It's too powerful. It's gonna suck you in, regardless. This is gonna. This is gonna make a huge mess for sure. My light's like, it's like focusing in darker and light. Yeah, you can't set and sit in front of a window. It's a rookie move. Yeah, I know. It's just the was where the where the comfy chair was, you know? Yeah. Why? Is that a house? Is that the house next door? This is the house next door, yeah. What's going on, guys? This podcast is brought to you by AG1 by Athletic Greens. And I want to tell you the reason I started using them is because I did not want to take all the pills in the morning, all the vitamins and minerals, I just wanted something I could get down easily, get my vitamins and minerals in, get my pre and probiotics in, help with my immune system and help with my digestive system. And this is what they sent me. So I looked into AG1 by Athletic Greens. They sent me this shaker cup and this canister. Um, actually tastes really good. It tastes like a chocolate kind of berry flavor. So that's very good. And I don't have to take all the pills every morning anymore. So if you go to the website, you check it out, it kind of gives you a full rundown of what is so great about it, right? And you scroll down from the top, go to athleticgreens.com forward slash RBP and scroll down and you get the full breakdown of why it's so good and what it can do for you. Digestive support, immunity support, pre-probiotics, as I said, vitamins and minerals, all this great stuff. And it's all just in one drink that I use every single morning. You can use it all during the day. My rituals, first thing in the morning, it seems to be making me feel good, gives me a little bit of energy. It makes me feel good that I got all my vitamins and minerals in. Guys, go to athleticgreens.com forward slash RBP and you'll get one year free vitamin D and you'll get five free travel packs of the AG1 by Athletic Greens. Check it out, guys. The link in the description below, athleticgreens.com forward slash RBP. I thought you had a lot more room. Uh, front and back, like see behind me, I have a big yard. Nothing, yeah. Front. But the, the neighbor on this side is pretty close. Yeah, mine's just like that here where I'm at too. Yeah, it's like an alley, and then it goes like to the backyard, and then there's like a fence between us. <laughs> this is better than Starbucks. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Uh, what's going on? How are you guys? Good. Good. I haven't been on a podcast in a week. I feel like I haven't seen anybody in forever, even though it's normal for you guys to only be on a week. Yeah, once normal for me, yeah. Feel, feeling rusty? I feel rusty, yeah. Are we going to have to carry this thing for you? Yeah. I'm a little tired and rusty. Justin, I think you should take over starting now. <laughs> All right, so Ian, 11 weeks out? Uh, it was 10 this weekend. 10, okay, yeah. Well, how are you feeling? Uh, 10 weeks out. <laughs> okay, so not bad, not bad. I don't feel thinking, lean, but I'm like getting there, you know? Dude, I know exactly what you mean. I'm in that place where I've dropped 10 pounds, but I'm still fat. So I just feel small and fat. Small and fat, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I, I didn't get very heavy. Like after the Olympia, I never went up. Like usually like an off season, get like 295, 300. I never really got over 285. So yeah. for me, it's been like the first four or five weeks of dieting. I've only dropped like four or five pounds, like from 285 yeah. to 280 now. So yeah, it's I didn't, a very, like gradual start for me. <laughs> I, I didn't get to 285 either. So <laughs> <laughs> you got to 280 though, didn't you? I like 278 when I was, you know, I don't know. Old, yeah, I definitely, I definitely touched 280 in the evenings, but that is good, good old Taco Bell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. After After a good Taco, Taco, Bell. Taco Bell day. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. I was I forgot, waiting. I, I forgot that I was doing that. <laughs> That's all you got? How's your That's it. That's <laughs> it. How many weeks out of you now? 17. 17. Yeah. Can I uh can I express uh one of my victories this week? I would love to hear your victories, man. This Saturday was the very first Saturday and probably I have to say, honestly, at least a year that I did not have a cheat meal. Nice. Whoa. All Isn't right. That, Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, and that is crazy. Yeah. Can you I tell you? You out riding a bike or something? No. No. Well, I've been out riding my bike, which is nice, but no, that's not why. I, uh, last, I think 
Tuesday, I think. When was the last time we did bro chat? Tuesday. Last Tuesday. Yeah. yeah, I woke up Tuesday morning and I was like, I feel disgusting. And I actually was what like, did, what, what led what? to what led to that? Did you just an accumulation of the last year of being a fat ass, or did you have something? <laughs> in a month? Or just like one day, a few. Feeling. Well, it was yeah. a, it was an accumulation of a year of like not having any discipline. Yeah. yeah. And then there was like four days straight where I ordered out every night. Oof, yeah. I've and seen I, it in person. It's it's sad. What, the way I eat? <laughs> Are you talking about the way I eat or the way I look? Just your lack of control. Yeah, the way you look too. But just like this, this insufferable fucking desire for food. That just Because if, you know what it is? I'm a fucking extremist. It's yeah, just, you are. It, it's I'm dieting or I'm fucking pigging out. There's no when way I, in between. When I suggested we shared that bag of Doritos, you looked at me like I was fucking insane. Like, you gotta be. You gotta like, be very. You gotta be like, very are you? Are you fucking kidding me? You're gonna share a family size bag of Doritos? Wait, oh, you eat that? You eat pound a family size bag of Doritos, no problem. Like just. Oh, dude. But that's standard. <laughs> See, yeah. Dude, okay, light work, baby. Come on. Not like a family that's size. That's like three thousand calories of Doritos. Oh, no, a lot. Wait, wait. Not like a Costco bag. Oh, like it, it, a, said, it said family size. The one that said family size. <laughs> the on one, the, yeah. the 200, 235 grams. That's it. Okay. It's Let's like see. a medium. It's like the medium one. No, it's not. It was the big it one. Said, no, it was not. It said one. family size. I, I bet you have a picture of these fucking Doritos. <laughs> Ian, it's the fucking medium one. It's a 235 grams. I order it on a regular basis. I know what it is. It's a lot but of you should see this guy just like hump. Hump, 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 like like fucking home or eating donuts, dude. Like just like this whole bag went down in like fifteen minutes. They're so good though. No, it didn't go down. It didn't go down fifteen minutes. That's look. No. Listen, it was about a, a ninety minutes of the movie, and it was. I have this thing about watching movies and eating. I like yeah. doing them together, yeah. and it, you know what I mean. Like, oh, I get it, dude, for sure. Yeah. So that's why chips are good because I can like snack the whole time I'm watching the movie. I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking shit, but you made me grab my own bag of chips. Yeah, and you weren't like, yeah, yeah, you weren't exactly good either. You were like, you finished no, your bag no. too. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I mean, I was definitely trying to keep up, and I couldn't no, do you it. Were. You were trying to keep up. <laughs> you were just mounted. you were, you have the same appetite they're, I have. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, I do. I do. I have, the, I have a very similar uh, desire for bullshit that you do. Um, I'm jealous. I'm not in. I'm not in like that. You know. Well, listen, don't be jealous because I feel be I feel like a million times better. It's been a week now. It's the first time I've gotten through an entire week with no cheats. Yeah. And like, and like, I can't remember when. The grass is greener thing, though, because like, I'm like jealous of people that can really like enjoy food, you know? Yeah. But then but I'm like, not... I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to enjoy it that much. You but know? you know what the problem is, Ian? You're not enjoying it. It's like I'm an addict. Yeah. It's like when you pig out four days in a row, you enjoy it the first day. Mm -hmm. And then you just start craving it because you had it the night before. So yeah. you just rolls into like three or four days. The I people, still, I, I mean, I've, dude, I've, I've been with you, Ian. Like, we'll go, you've, we've gone out to like sushi together. You'll go out and you'll enjoy some sushi rolls and sure. you will enjoy food. Yeah. But I think what his is like a, it's an obsession and it's an unhealthy one. I'm telling you, it's an, it's like an addiction. Yeah. I'm telling yeah. you, like, cause it's like, you know, when you, if, okay, I don't know, you guys all eat McDonald's. Paul, what's up, man? How are you? Hi, what? We're talking about food again. Oh, what are we talking about? Your, uh, <laughs> my fat ass habits. Ah, uh, okay. Um, you know when you go for McDonald's? I don't know if you guys get this. The day after you eat McDonald's, do you crave more the next day or less? More. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's sure, but yeah. that's what happens to me because you had the sugar the night before. You wake up the next day and your brain's like, "Oh, what am I gonna? I gotta have something." Yeah. Yeah. So when when I was bodybuilding, I would be like, "I can't have anything. I'm going back to my diet." Right. But now that I'm not bodybuilding, I'm like. Dude, I get it. I would, <laughs> I would, I would really struggle with not doing it because I had that freedom. You know, I fuck. I took it like an eighteen month off season, so I, I mean, I didn't eat out a bunch. But the second it was like, hey, you can't do that, I was like, oh, what the fuck, dude? Yeah, I don't, yeah. I want the popcorn at the movies, dude. Yeah, like yeah. I have like an overarching fear of getting fat, so it's like hard for me even if I'm not bodybuilding. You know. So do you do you actually you actually have a concern? Is that just like some hidden insecurity that you worry you'll balloon up and be a fatty? Well, like I'm naturally a very thin person, so it would be hard for me to get fat, but I don't know when I eat like crappy food, I'm like, fuck, I'm just, I've worked so yeah. hard to like eat good food for so long and stay lean. I'm like, I don't want to just ruin it all and get fat. You know, you know, when you, when you get older, that goes away. Yeah. Well, no, you know what? It doesn't go away. It just, it ha comes on slowly. Like I've been eating this way for fucking a year and a half now, maybe two. So it's like the way I look now versus the way I look two years ago is drastically different, but it didn't happen all like overnight. Yeah. 
So I'm like, I look, me and, you know, I took my shirt off the other day to change my shirt. And Paul's like, look great. He's like, dude, so it's like, it's getting bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I look from the front and I'm like, it's not that bad. Cause I can still see an outline of my abs and stuff. But yeah. then I turn to the side and it's all like in my love handles. I'm like, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so am, I, am I naive to think that when I'm done bodybuilding, I'm just going to be like a bird eating one meal a day and be 165 pounds. No, I think you will though. Cause you're not like a food person. Like I honestly, like now that I'm uh, dieting, I guess I only eat like two or three meals. Well, no, three or four meals a day. See, do you, do you think that when I start eating less, I'll become more of a food person though? Probably. I think your, yeah. I think your, your desire is stifled by your, intake yeah you know what i mean having to eat you that have, much you don't want to eat do you have yeah. anything you're addicted to like other than drugs or like what are we talking about other, <laughs> than, other than steroids are you addicted to uh, and cigarettes Cigs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no i don't know well because i'm just saying like that's my one vice like when we yeah. used to go so i used to go out and party and i had friends that would like do lines of coke and they would stay out for three days straight sure i've been there yeah, and I was like, I probably did that twice, and I was like, this is fucking horrible. It's still but, worse. Yeah, so I got to this pattern where I only did enough. I only had enough fun that I would go to bed before the sun came up. Yeah, when you were so the I could, I could, Yeah, so I could always shut that down. But when it comes to food, it's like I have a fucking, like this just nonstop, unsati yeah. insatiable fucking appetite. And where does your mind go when you start getting down there? Does it stop thinking or you're like, fuck it, I'm already this far in, just keep going? <laughs> That's, that's what it is yeah. i think that's what melissa's mind does too yeah. she's like she has a little like she'll be like i'm just gonna have a cookie and a little bit of ice yeah. cream and then yeah. she'll eat that and she'll be like well fuck it i've already had this i might as well just scrap it and be fresh tomorrow you know yeah, yeah. Or like i'll just fast for 12 hours tomorrow yeah. you, know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know what though the, uh, the odd few times that i have been able to have like a little bit of something and stop it feels a million times better yeah, yeah. like i wake yeah. up to, i wake up i wake up the next day with like a little bit of self-control and still have my pride so yeah. a, to be honest, but, what I what I mostly like is being able to get out like with Jasmine and go enjoy a nice restaurant, and have yeah. like a fucking high quality meal in a good environment. Like that's what I enjoy. I don't. That's like that's what I'll do. Like in the off like, season, if I'm gonna go out and have a meal. It's like me and Melissa are gonna go to a nice restaurant, put yeah. on some nice clothes, like enjoy like a proper three exactly. or four course meal, and you know have a glass of wine and go home and make babies later. You know. So, <laughs> so me and Summer got into that. We would go out, we'd have dinner, we'd have two or three drinks. And I said to her, I'm like, this is so much more enjoyable than just ordering fucking Uber Eats and like feeling gross yeah. after. Well, it's Fuad, when you uh, when yeah. you got a hair hairline like this, dude, you uh, you go to fancy restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not going to get the joke. <laughs> I get he it. Don't... I was here for that, wasn't I? Yeah, I think so. Well, one well, day, one day he was posting on his stories. They were at him and fucking Jasmine go to these fancy restaurants all the time, like just mm. really like. Yeah, swanky joints, good food. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. Yeah, so, I'm like, so I don't I'm not big on that shit. I get uncomfortable when I'm in like super fine dining fucking places, right? So I I'm like that is because I feel like a meathead. Uh, and I and, and I could now because I can wear nice clothes, but when I was 300 pounds and I couldn't fit into a fucking dress shirt, it just didn't feel right. I feel like yeah, you're you're like, see, I almost, I almost try and think of it the other way. When I'm like when I'm a big guy and I put on nice clothes and I'm like you go to a restaurant, they're like they must think I'm like somebody, you know. Like I gotta be somebody important. <laughs> this guy's the fucking man. No, dude. they yeah, do. Like, no, this guy's like this guy's like an NFL player or like a fucking WWE. No. Or like, they yeah. think you're some. If you look like that, they think you're somebody. See, that's where that's where I think the anxiety thing comes into play because my brain works like this: Who's that fucking meathead, and yeah. how the fuck did he try and fit that bed sheet? Who has on his back? <laughs> <laughs> it's going, oh man, they're staring at me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. I don't good. think Maybe. one. I don't that's, think one fucking word about it. I don't. That, I don't that's I'll good. Go. Make fun. Make fun of my affliction. Come on. Make <laughs> <laughs> <Take> it worse. <laughs> you you made fun of my hairline. This is like terrible. The anxiety I have, social anxiety, is like not one of them like that. No, I didn't make fun of your hairline. I said you can go to those places because of your hairline. Yeah, he goes. No, no, no. He goes. I don't know how you do. It. He goes. It's your hairline. Yeah. Is it more mature? It looks old. Yeah. He'd see. I get it. I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Paul, you, you look, wish you had this hair. I, I, you're right. I do wish <laughs> you look older and more mature, so you fit in. You would, even though you're you'd love to run a comb through this mop, baby. <laughs> no, it's it's, sick. it starts too far back. <laughs> no, <fuck> you. <laughs> I've got perfect podcasting hair, you know? It's yeah, good, it's good from, from the front. front. Can't see the yeah. back, you know? yeah. like, from yeah. the front, you're like, damn, this guy's got a head of hair, you know? But then it's like, oh, no, we'll not yeah. let that. Go. 
<laughs> Listen, I, I don't you guys saw guys so for those watching guy sent us a photo of his head after his hair transplant yeah Ooh, that was brutal. Yeah. how's he look now oh, i haven't i haven't talked to him in a couple of days probably but... just like it'll they'll be like little scabs now aren't, aren't you supposed to like you can't wash it nothing for a couple of weeks yeah you gotta be pretty careful on it for a little bit i think yeah you can't wear a hat either right yeah for at least for the first couple of weeks yeah yeah so that you're gonna looks, be stuck at home for a couple of weeks yeah painful man i don't think yeah. it's worth i don't think it's worth it did he say it was painful Yes, he did. He said it was fucking brutal. He said he thought it was. Yeah. Gonna, he said he was going to be no big deal. And he sat down. And they did the first one, and he was like, "Holy fuck!" I you know, really I, I, but I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll just fill in. Fill in there. You should just get the tattoo right there, Justin. Just right there. <laughs> Stip, stipple it in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a short piece there. It's a yeah. <laughs> long, and then just like a short. Right there. Yeah. It's buzzed right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The new look. Uh, I've, heard, I've heard such mixed like things from that though because i've heard some people who've got it done they're like fuck it's no big deal like they kind of laugh yeah. and gas you out a bit you chill and watch netflix like it's no yeah, big dude. deal and then i've heard some people be like man it fucking sucked it was the worst you know what are they do they, yeah. they don't they don't put you under they just do they put topical cream on your they head numb, or something they numb it but i think some places might like gas you up a bit i'm you not sure see, but... i mean i mean guy had blood dripping halfway yeah. down his shirt yeah, yeah. He, yeah but he fucking did. He found like some back alley doctor. And yeah, he was a, he was he probably guy. was. Yeah, the guy, the guy from the, the guy from the Simpsons probably did it. Yeah, hey, yeah. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what I, I was gonna say. So when they did my uh, stem cell on my face, they put topical anesthetic, so like it kind of yeah, numbs your it. numbs your skin. But I could still yeah. feel the fucking needle. Yeah, like, could still, still feel the pressure. So I was wondering, like, is that what they do for your head? Do, like, they put topical cream to freeze it, or do they actually put you under? No, I, no, they don't put you under, but I think they inject some numbing stuff into your head. Mm. Mm. So I don't think mm. it's just topical. I think it's injected, like, subcutaneously into the skin yeah. around the head. Mm. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, it uh, it doesn't feel worth it to me. I mean, I guess it depends on your situation, know. guys. Well, for, especially for Ian, like Ian, you have a spot like this big, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Guy did like the. 70 percent of his well head. i wasn't even yeah. thinking that i was thinking for ian he's been married for fucking a decade like it's not like his I wife's mean, gonna leave him you, are you getting it done ian uh yeah i mean me, me and chris were gonna we had a place now hair time from turkey reach out to us and they were gonna do it as like an exchange you know like we make youtube videos and promote it and blah blah blah, and they would do it comped mm -hmm. um so we're gonna go there eventually and do it but i don't neither of us right now feel like so urgent to do it to like and the timing, it's like the only time you can do it's in your off season. But is that really how yeah. you want to spend the weeks of your off season with your fucking head all? You know what I mean? Honestly, sure. yeah. honestly, Ian, this is how I see it. If I was in Ian's shoes, I'd be like, okay, number one, I already look good with a shaved head. Number two, I'm fucking married for over a decade. Yeah. <laughs> Gives a fuck. When, if you, when is the last time you shaved your head, though, Ian? I, I... 2014 or 15. Yeah, I don't know. Why? Plus, what, are you saying? what are you saying? He's going to look bad now with a shaved head? No, oh, you, you're saying he looks good. I just I can't recall Ian with a shaved head. Oh, I remember the, shorter. The thinner I am, my face. The thinner my face is, the better it looks. Like if yeah, I'm yeah, off yeah. with a shaved head, it looks terrible. I know? used I to like at like Showtime. I would just buzz my head and Always, get yeah. several days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, until, gotta... until 2014 or 15, I'd buzz my head for like every show. Yeah, but after you get that surgery, you got to go on Propecia, right? It's well, you don't have to, but obviously to protect your investment, it's ideal, you know. So otherwise, it could just happen again after a little while, if you're, especially if you're still I mean, using drugs. If you use Propecia, it can still happen again. I mean, it really depends, right? Because you know, using something like Propecia isn't going to protect, especially if you're still using anabolics. Like, it's not going to protect against all types of anabolic shedding, right? Like, yeah. there's different drugs that convert to DHT, and you know what I mean. So the whatever's killing it, the follicle is. It's not Propecia is not going to protect you from everything, by not even close. You know what worries me about that? It, and this might be a false equivalency, but it's kind of like when I did uh, laser hair removal. Yeah. And they were, and they were like, look, it, we're, you're you're good for it because like my skin on my body is lighter than my face. So yeah. like your skin's light enough, you have black hair, it'll work perfectly for you. But then they're like, but if you're still on hormones. It's going to grow back. Right. Now, the only thing I can say is when my hair grows back, it grows back much thinner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Where did still, you get it done? I got my entire back done like. Oh, no uh, shit. Probably like 12 times. You, yeah, you, you gotta, gotta you gotta do it like a number yeah, of times. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. So I did my entire back. Uh, I think I just and I think I did my arms too. So like when yeah. the hair grows in, it grows in thin. I haven't been you know taking PEDs for very long. I wonder if I will eventually lose my hair. Well, it'll probably just keep going back. <sighs> you say yeah, that, yeah. but this it's been like this. This is fucking. But that's fine. It's been like that my whole life. This is just. Oh really? 
yeah, my dad's looks just like that. And his looked like that his whole life. My dad's 62 right now, jet black, full thick head of hair. It just got, you'll probably be how fine. How about then. your mom's dad? Well, don't talk about him. They say it comes from your mom's side. Yeah. He's yeah. bald as fuck, but I have, I legit have like my dad's hairline. See, really? like I have great hair genetics. Like every, like my mom's dad had like a full head of hair till he died at 85. Like, you know, mm. in my family, there's good hair, but I mean, 10, 15 years of, it eventually caught me in some places. Yeah, so I, I have yeah. uncles. I have uncles that started like balding in their teens. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait. I think Paul just made that up. No, about their mom's side. He's Listen, always that's kind of Jack. Who had him always right? Always, always, always almost. Before. Before. Always before. almost. Before. Yeah. See, just, you know. Wait, wait. I just want to say something. So all my uncles on my mom's side all still have their hair. My dad, everybody in his family is bald. Mm. Google it. Google it. Yeah, let's Google it. What am I? I don't at? think it's hundred percent, but it's like it, oh, it now we're, we're more walking, heavier. walking it back already. <laughs> you, you get your you get your your hair genes more from your paternal or maternal side. <laughs> okay. Let's... I don't know if it works. Like I think eyes are more of like a recessive gene like that where it works, but I don't know if hair would. Ah. <laughs> popular myth <laughs> it's a myth you <laughs> idiot i knew it i fucking knew well it's a popular myth so but it's a, still yeah it's passed down from both wait sides. for from people on audio i'll just read this quickly one popular myth is that hair loss in men is passed down from mother's side of the family while hair loss in women is passed down from the father's side however the truth is that genes for hair loss and hair loss itself are actually passed down from both sides of the family yeah, uh, I, I, we, we I, just, I'm telling you, bro, we just got big foreheads. Like, yeah, this, it's, not, this, it's not like that's, that's my that's my dad right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got, he a looks big, good. got a six head also. Yeah. <laughs> good looking guy, though. You fucking yeah. fucker talking about my dad like that. <laughs> no, he does. He got a big forehead. But, you know, he's like, I mean, that's him at 60 years old. And he's got like, and that's people think at, he dies. He's, he's doing good. People that's think he dyes his hair and dyes his beard. But no, he doesn't. That's just him. They don't like his hair either. Jeez. We're rocking the DC fucking shirt too. What a Oh, dude. Yeah. Swag yeah. with a fucking goatee, dude. He ah, looks yeah. younger. He looks younger than Paul. <laughs> no, come on. This goes with the gray in my beard. <laughs> he does. Put that picture, picture, put that picture back up. Have you dyed your beard before, Paul? No. I, well, I tried doing that wash stuff before and it came up purple. So I shaved it the next day. So someone, <laughs> someone turned us on to some game and said that it's the, it's the brightness of your phones. So that's my phone with the brightness all the way down. Yeah, so he's got a little bit of gray in the chin there. Yeah, a little bit. He looks younger than both of us, Paul. Yeah, he does look good. He looks pretty good. You yeah. got good genes, Justin. Yeah, that's why I feel like, dude, you're going to be burnt toast by 40. I'm like, dude, you smell. <laughs> yeah, good genes uh, for a face. Maybe not so much bodybuilding, but. <laughs> <laughs> and the <death. laughs> You're such an idiot. Um. Uh, okay, another thing. There's some other news I wanted to tell you about. Ian, I want to thank you. Because, uh -oh. no, because of the test. So you've been saying for a while now that you do small amounts of tests every day. Is that true? Dude, I, I got that right, right? Yeah. Yeah. So every day, you said? Daily. So I, so I had Dr. Hotchkiss on to ask him about it. And when he told me basically that the only reason bodybuilders do intramuscularly, intramuscularly is more for cosmetic reasons than anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't need to take that much and I'm not going on fucking stage anymore. So I'm going to try this shit. So I started doing 50 milligrams a day. In a slim pin. In a slim pin. Yeah. Sub subcutaneously. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do five milligrams a day or 50 milligrams a day, five days a week. Yep. I nice. fucking, I feel phenomenal. It's so it's much great. easier, right? But it's yeah. not just that, like, okay, so I'll, I'll explain something and see if people can maybe make sense of this. So I've been off for a long time and then I tried to do one shot a week. After like the third week, I felt myself getting aggressive. I would get like hmm. peak, peaks of aggression. Yeah. Peaks and valleys. Yeah. Yeah. So I stopped. Summer was like, Hey man, I could tell you're on, like you're acting That's different. Cool. Right. So I stopped. <clears throat> so then I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this thing. I've noticed I feel better, but there's no like. I don't get like shitty. Booty. I don't get aggressive or agitated. Uh, roid rage. I don't get <laughs> any roid rage. <laughs> I always, I like, I always suggest people do like Trenbolone daily. Yeah. Right now, I'm, I'm doing everything daily. I do I? I do all my yeah. shots daily. I just do everything, especially like in. And just to clarify, when I'm doing like multiple compounds in an off season or contest prep, saying I'm not using slim pins, mm -hmm. but I'm still using 
you know, I'm doing them every day just so that the volume stays smaller and that your shots and your, and your levels stay more even. So like, you know, if I'm doing test trend master on, I'll just do a small bit every day, seven days a week, instead of every other day doing a little more, you know, I just, it's been really, really, it's been much better for me because I basically loaded the insulin syringe all the way to a hundred and I just take 20 out per shot. You So you do use the same needle yeah. every time? Yeah. All the things so blunt and just like. No, <laughs> man. It's only five. It's only five shots. It's not. And you, a slim you, pin, you could probably get 10 or 15 out of no Yeah. yeah it, and when you go into the, when you go into the fat, it doesn't get like as dull. Yeah. So, Do you have a hard time loading it though? No. Is it oil you're, getting it? Load it, from, load, load, it from, the, load it from the back. Oh. So you pull, like you pull the plunger out, take yeah, it with right. a normal syringe, squirt it in, then put the backpack on. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So I actually just put the insulin syringe next to my blood pressure medication nice and yeah. so every, every morning i just do my 20 i use and i do my good you've been so fucking inconsistent with that shit for years for no reason mm. no, yeah i know yeah so... this this when you're not having the daunting like fuck i gotta do a stick a 23 gauge needle in me like blah blah, blah. it's so you know it's just so much I, easier. i also yeah. find that if i'm pinning every other day i'm like i forget like did i fucking pin today that yeah this, this is the main reason actually why i started it before i even knew the science of it if it was like shots like every three days or every two days i'm like did i yeah. shoot yesterday did i not so i'm like i'll just do half the amount every day and i know i have. I to like it. it i like i'm like i'm pinning like 1.2 daily yeah and i used to forget i would just do it anyway just in case so i was probably like doubling up on all my shots yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably yeah. do it. Yeah. better to err on the side of caution <laughs> that's, that's yeah. exactly uh, how you sure. <laughs> double up <laughs> shut up justin it worked it's it like, bad. did I eat meal three? Ah, I better eat. I better eat. Better eat another one. <laughs> better eat <laughs> um. Anyway, so anybody listening out there, I don't know if I could do what Ian does. I don't want to do a shot like a shot shot every day. But anybody doing TRT out there, it's fucking way easier, and it feels way better. Yeah, the thing the thing I noticed too is I I did it for a long time when I was doing the daily shots. I needed to switch to using a smaller gauge. Like I use a twenty five now. I use I use a twenty five. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think if you're going to shoot that much, inge- like that much frequency of injections, you'll just save yourself a little scar tissue accumulation by using a smaller, less invasive needle, you know? Yeah. yeah. yeah if I'm only pinning an ML, I can do a, a fucking 25 gauge and spend a little more time pushing it through. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you're, if you're shooting a three mil bomb, then you might just say, fuck it and do a 23 because you'll be sitting <laughs> yeah. there for 10 minutes with your three thumb mil- like <laughs> three <laughs> mil bomb. <laughs> <laughs> All of mine were three mil bombs. What the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> That's because you were shooting not often. I know. I was only doing... no, I was... twice a week, just fucking. No, hammer. mine were, no, mine were we're all monday wednesday friday that's how i did mine but i mean t- really if you think of it if you did that was the way i remembered i would just did monday wednesday oh, friday no, was- yeah you didn't remember that way you know what i mean yeah so i don't know i don't think that's that hard to remember no it's not but i still i forget and i'm just more in a routine of like i get out of the shower i pin i go yeah, yeah. yeah i just make a part i do it every day same time yeah i'm not asking this for myself i'm asking if somebody asked me it doesn't matter what time of day right well, no, like the time of day is irrelevant. I think consistency is relevant. Like, I, wouldn't shoot time. At, I wouldn't shoot it at 10 a.m. and then the next day at 10 p.m. where it's only right. 12 hours instead of yeah. 24. I do think like, I do think there's at, sorry, sorry. I, I do think there's some literature about it possibly like having a small spike in your energy and people during the evening could have some detriment to their sleep, but I'm not really I'm not really sure if that's true or not. I don't know if it has anything to do with sli- I mean, maybe it does, and I just never felt it because I used to do all my shots at night. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, right now, I'm doing my shots at night, and I don't fucking. I don't yeah. I do, I've done my shots right before I go to bed for 15 years. Huh? Yeah. 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 But maybe, maybe my sleep would be better not doing that. I have no maybe. idea. Maybe. That's what I'm saying. I think I, I, I think I recall seeing some literature or something written about that, but I could be full of shit. I could be Paul right now and just be almost. You're probably a little bit right, Justin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably a little bit right. You probably read it somewhere. Yeah. Probably read a myth somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Convince repeating. myself I'm right. You're repeating myths. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Justin, have, hey, you, what's up? Have, you, have you picked the show yet, or what are you doing? Yeah, fuck it. Chicago Pro, 17 weeks. Oh, baby. oh yeah. Who's doing yeah. the Chicago Pro? Anybody you know? Blessing is maybe the boogeyman. Oh. I gotta say, Blessing's yeah. been looking good though, man. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Let's take a look. Blessing looks like he's like 300 fucking 20 pounds right now. I think he is. But it doesn't look like a bad 320. Like no, he looks, he looks like he's actually grown. I'm still gonna smoke him. It's fine. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. Just Let's kidding. Say... Of course you are. Don't say that. Yeah. Okay, so he's put on obviously body fat. How much of this is gonna stick around? You think? 
because he looks bigger. Yeah. Like the center, the, the center of his back is definitely thicker. Mm-hmm. Our arms look bigger too, but his legs were the issue. So I wonder how much yeah, size. Is I'm yeah. not yeah. 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 Back yeah. Back his back is definitely grown. Like there's a lot of. Yeah, that's a good but you need context. Go to an off season last year just so we can see comparatively. No, no, I know. I just want to see if there's something for the legs from the front because these hams yeah. still look like you need more work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh wait. Yeah, I think more. it's really that that one leg. There's a big disparity between the size of the left and right leg. So that uh, doesn't really show, leg, but yeah, it looks. If he's brought up his legs, then he'll be tough. I think. Um, yeah, I think blessings I can, good. See if I can find a last off season. Yeah, I don't know who else is doing the show. That's just I'm. He's the only one that I've known that said something about it. This, I think, this is when he was getting ready. Obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. His back is great. Yeah, I mean, I think his back is his best body part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to find it. Yeah, no, fuck it. There's something here. Third week in, 19 more to go. Yeah, this is a pretty off season. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't really show much, though, from the front. Uh, Here's something. It's good there. Yeah, he looks... He looks awesome here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's that's one of the best shots I've seen of him. Yeah, that's yeah. a six shot. It's probably it's photoshopped. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> so Chicago, anything else? I think I want to do Chicago and Tampa. I mean, we'll see how everything goes, but Chicago, Tampa. That's I'd like to do those two shows. Does anybody know what Sergio's doing? Because I know he he's from Chicago. I, so I, I thought it was like the I thought it was the Arnold like the what? Arnold, um... He was doing the Arnold Brazil or whatever's yeah. early. South America or something. Arnold, but that, Arnold Brazil's that, in like two weeks. I mean, he looks, I would say he looks like he's ready. That's yeah, so of, that's what I think he was planning to do, he said, but then I don't know if he's still doing it because of that legal yeah. thing yeah. that happened. He had spent a little time. I, I would think yeah. New York being the next show that he might be in New York if this doesn't work out for some reason. But again, that's just totally guessing. Who's doing New York? I don't know. I don't know of anybody doing it. Like, like, Sergio, uh-huh. come to Toronto. We got enough people doing New York. Come to Toronto. Yeah, hey. yeah, you're doing Toronto, you know. Yeah, we need some, we need some more good guys in Toronto. Get over here, Sergio. Why? Just take the easy win. <laughs> what? Like, no, but just... I want to be, I want to be good people. You know. He looks good. It's hard yeah, to tell how. Else. It's hard to tell how much. Like he looks way bigger, but it's hard to tell how much bigger. Sergio was very deceiving because he's way bigger in person. I know yeah, he's that. a big guy. That's what I mean. Yeah, in person, he the first time I saw him, he was very like I was like, man, this guy's a lot bit like you look at that and you're like, okay, this is a good bodybuilder, but you don't get that that's like six foot three hundred pounds. You know? No, yeah, he's, he's, he's wide he's too. So we yeah, were doing he's a big dude, man. I think yeah, was, I think it was two years ago now. We were doing an appearance at uh Bullfrog Nutrition for yeah, before that was there. Remember before the Arnold? I think that was the first time I met Sergio. Yeah, yeah, so and I was we, impressed with how big he was. We walk in. And he's standing at one of the first tables there. And he was like, he, I was like, how fucking wide is this guy? Yeah. Because yeah. he's not only six foot or six foot one or whatever. He's also fucking like extremely yeah, he's a, wide. He's a lot mm-hmm. bigger in person than you think. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyone else doing Toronto, Ian, that you know of? I know some Canadian guys. I know uh, that guy who just turned pro, uh, Morgan McDonald. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Morgan's doing his debut. Um, I think Joe Seaman might be doing it. Okay. Um, I only know of a couple Canadian guys now. I don't. I don't know anyone else. But okay. So okay, the first show coming up though. We'll get back to you in a second, Justin. Sorry, but yeah, that's the fine, first man. thing coming up is uh, the Arnold Brazil is a couple weeks away. Yeah, and I think is Bonac doing that show because he keeps posting progress photos. He still looks good. You think those are current? I don't know. I just saw something go up today. I was like, is that how? Are they not like, like put a list out? And I don't. I don't... I have no idea of anybody doing this. I haven't. I've been trying to find a list. I can't seem to find one. Yeah. I thought I saw a post he put up like a week or two ago that he was going to wait till next year, take the year off, and go back next year at the yeah, Arnold's. I, I'm, yeah. I'm just going to take a look at this with you guys. Uh, he's. This is, I don't know. It doesn't say when it's from. No, it says this uh, looks best on me a week out from Arnold Sports. Yeah. Oh, I didn't read the rest of that. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I, I don't know if he's doing something, is he? I don't yeah, know. These are before the Arnold. Yeah. Are they? Yeah. Okay. Well, then if Bonac's not doing it, I don't know anybody who can beat Baruz right now that's doing it that I heard oh, of. Oh, yeah. He looks, I saw his updated photos. He looks Baruz good. Baruz looks good. Yeah, he looks great. Yeah. Like to show people. Super nice things. shape. Gets a good condition. Obviously, he needs some more muscle in his legs and, and some, some spots, but it's I, a I super, think, super pretty physique. I think his legs 
look like everything looks bigger, but I think his shape is really coming, man. I think he's going to be a contender. I, yeah, I love his shape. Yeah. And like he's gotten some fucking gnarly condition, man. Yeah, yeah, he gets those fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. I think he's gotten a lot bigger across the chest and shoulders here. Yeah. And he's brought up the legs to match. I think it's the shape of his legs is why they don't look because they don't sweep out. Yeah, yeah, for the for the He works with Milos, yeah. Right? I think yeah. so, yeah. Like his legs are good. Like he's got decent hams, could use a little bit more. But like look at the fucking shoulders, tricep, everything's like real thick. Yeah, it's very round. Good. Very round. I wonder what this guy's weighs is like. How much do you think is is he a heavy guy or like is he a smaller guy in person? We we talked about this before. Remember last year you said he thought he'd be small and he was. I think he was two fifty five. Oh, two fifty five. Okay. Yeah. I think so. When he when he what beat... did what did uh, Brett weigh at that show? Was it he beat Brett in um, Spain? No, 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 no. This the two fifty number I believe is from the year before. Yeah, that was really? from the pro. The pro was it Prague or what? what Regan or like those guys? Yeah, when he did those like the, yeah. the 20, 2021. Yeah. I believe he was 250 at that show, and he's peeled, peeled at 250. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, fucking crazy, like, condition. So, Brett's in like the mid 240s or low 240s, right? Mid 240s. So. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure, but it could be just a height thing because I think Baru's a little taller than, um, Brett. But yeah. here's another, here's another. Oh, there, there's a picture of them right next to each other down there. Look at that shape, man. Yeah. yeah. Just the legs well, there. got really nice, high, bubbly lats, you know? Yeah. It's When's just, that from? That's last people. year? This is three weeks ago. Oh, weeks shit. Ago. Yeah. Five weeks out, yeah. That's a yeah, good shot. Nice. Yeah, yeah, his legs good. aren't crazy. This quad sweep, eh? Yeah, but yeah. he's got thick adductors, so it kind yeah, of makes, makes up for it. It still look good. Like, it's it's not that big mm. of a detraction, even though they obviously need some more size. It still looks nice. Mm. It just flows very well. So yeah, it's, it flows good. Mm. Yeah. There's a lot of guys with great shape now, eh? Yeah, round. You could use a... Oh, the hamstring looks better on this side. The hamstring looks good. Let's see, yeah, the other side looked smaller. Let's see from the back, and he works with Milos, right? I believe so. Yeah, that's a yeah. Uh, Justin but... asked. I think he does. Back looks good. Yeah, I think the hams could use a little bit more. Yeah, like across. Yeah, good back. Back is really good though. That's that fucking Arab genetics. Arabs always got good backs. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I like the Asians. Even if they train them like dummies. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, yeah, here they are next to each other. So I yeah, he's a little taller than Brett. But I, God I damn, look how fucking hard he is. Dude, he's crazy. If you look at from the back. Watch. I got to find it. We find a shot. No, up there. Back. No, up up to the right above the one with Brett. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. This is Jeez. this is looks oh, like no. a structure a bit. Glutes are fucking, I don't care. Yeah, jeez. No, look at this. You see an actual video. That front white look or front uh, double looks like Dean. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. yeah. Shot. I, like I love, I love the fucking direction bodybuilding is going in right now. It's definitely going in the right direction. There's yeah. a lot of young talent coming up too. Yeah, it does seem like there's a lot of guys that have nice shape that are actually coming up into open. I mean, think about it, right? When you, when you look at the Olympia now, you could talk about like Andrew, Samson, oh, glutes, man. Uh, Killer Rafa- glutes, Ra- man. Raphael. Yeah. He, he's qualified for the Olympia now. Like you start getting guys with like. Who's qualified for the Olympia now? Yeah. Oh, he is. Yeah, he is. Oh, yeah, I yeah. forgot. Yep. And in Spain, he did. Yeah. Brett. Brett's another one. Yep. Martin. You see some guys Quentin. with like really Quentin. Yeah. Quentin. Fuck, Quentin's another one. Quentin's taking the year off. I saw. Yeah. 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 I don't, dude. Honestly, I think it's a smart idea. I think of an, another full year off season with that oh, kid. Dude, he's only yeah. He's well, like twenty six. That's what I was gonna say. Being yeah. his age, yeah, he's times on his side. Mm-hmm. Seems like he's made a bit of a shift in his training approach, which I know Fuad loves. Uh, yeah, he seems to be training a little bit more hardcore now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, more, more heavy weight. <laughs> free weight barbell stuff <laughs> um, no i just i see i see him training and i can tell that it's matt's influence there which i think will be look i, I put up a beneficial. post i put up a post today and I, that's my answer to every argument from now on i don't give a fuck what you guys say hey i've I put up a few posts that you were like 
No, uh, no, no. But you put up posts actually direct. Oh, and I saw the little argument you got into about shoulder yeah. press. <laughs> yeah, I know. Fucking hell. <laughs> Such a people nitpicking verbiage now. Like, uh, yeah, I know. I was like, oh, oh. So apparently it's, it was just boiled down to verbiage. We actually agreed. I just said overhead press and, you know. He said it I don't know. It's pretty funny. Okay, Ian, you have fucking phenomenal shoulders. I think you have some of the biggest shoulders in in maybe in the IFBB right now. Uh, do you shoulder press? Is this a trick question? No, I mean I want to know. Do you, that's, how, do you, that's how silly the question is. He thinks it's a trick question. Of course. Okay. So cool. what was the argument? Like, this this is, well, I listen, dude. I, I made I made a post that says, "Hey, you know." Some people will tell you, my caption, I think, was some people will tell you you don't have to uh, build a strong uh, shoulder press to build big shoulders. And then I said, some people have small shoulders and say things that aren't true. That was <laughs> And uh, but then I got, I got into I had, I had a bunch of people that came at me. They're like, hey, bro, rear delts and fucking side laterals. Fucking sure, that's all you but need. Find me, one, yeah. find me one person. With like elite level delts that can't shoulder press astronomical. You can't make an argument yeah, yeah. from authority, Ian. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, don't twist our own shit back on us. But and honestly, so we, we were going, I was going back and forth with that Jared Feather kid, but at the end of it, we actually agreed. He was just saying he prefers like a high incline and not, a, he was thinking overhead press, like, you know, like vertical, like press right behind yeah, you. Don't, which, don't. But wait a minute. This is the problem with most of these discussions. Yeah. They're so like, it's the verbiage sometimes is so close. I know. I'm like, dude, yeah. come on. It's it's like, shoulder pressing. No, but this is the point I was making. I put up a post today. basically said, I don't give a fuck how you train. You just have to train hard. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just put effort into it. So that, I'm not getting into these arguments with you guys anymore. I don't give a fuck. You guys. Okay. You, you guys can be right as much as you want. I don't care. Yep. Thank you. We'll, we'll long, be right. Thank you. The problem you is train like, hard. There was so many people in that comment section that didn't understand what Jared and myself were talking about that were like, I don't, I don't know, just, you know. Jared's doing all Nick's training now, right? Yeah, well, they're training together. I don't know if he's actually programming or. I think he's programming I, those training. Is he? Because I know that, like, he told, I was talking to Nick, and he said that Matt ha wants him doing, like, a push-pull leg split where he's training legs twice a week. I think, but, he, I, think I saw in a story the other day that he said he's not doing the push-pull legs anymore because the frequency – and like the amount of like workload was a little too much for the style he trains. He thought, really? I, I swear, I just messaged Nick like two days ago and he told me that. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't know if from yesterday, but still, uh, maybe I'm mis misinterpreted. But but what I, is what I, is he doing? He's doing legs twice a week with a push pull leg split. So what's wrong with that? Okay. okay. He's probably just doing that for a little while, right? Yeah, I this is on Sunday. He says Matt wants me doing push pull off legs off repeat. Push pull legs off leg. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. So I mean, I guess it's it's legs twice in what yeah. would that be? Eight nine days. days, nine day, eight days. Yeah. Um. Is it anyway, like that's the part of the problem is having like Jared's a science guy, right? Like, isn't it, he, dude, like, super like, smart guy? And but it's a very like nuanced conversation that people didn't really understand. But you know, I, I don't know. It's just it, we had we had like good discourse and it was a fun conversation between us. It was fine. But well, it's not know. not going to him. It's more going to the people that were commenting. Isn't this this is kind of what I feel like the state of bodybuilding is, though? Yeah. So honestly, what he said, which I disagreed with, he said that training like an incline press a chest press is going to train your shoulders so it's you know it's not necessary to do a shoulder press and what i said to him was when i do a chest press i'm keeping my shoulders pinned behind my back and i'm making sure that i'm removing my front delt as much right. as, yeah minimizing the the use of my shoulders as much as possible you can't mitigate it entirely and then the shoulder press is the exact opposite i'm trying to use my shoulders so i think there's right. value in chest yeah. yeah you know so like no I, but but my point I was trying to make is not about Jared because Jared and you are having an understanding about what you're saying. The point I'm yeah. trying to make is to people listening or people commenting outside of that. The point I was trying to make is they're taking the easier road in my opinion. And that's, what it's much, doing. it's much easier to just do a bunch of side lateral raises and then like build. Cause my point was, I was like, yo, put a fucking hundred pounds on your shoulder press and your shoulders will be bigger. I promise but this for is, sure. But this is my, um, frustration i guess if you have a guy who turned pro in three years or whatever it was justin three years yeah and he's i did a show a pro qualifier fourth okay, place okay, okay take it easy it's not the point <laughs> <laughs> I, I nailed it <laughs> so you have a guy who turned pro in three years who's getting ready for his pro debut who's put on 20 pounds of muscle in a year or so and he's giving you a tip 
and instead of listening to it, you yeah. argue. And I'm like, why? Right. Why yeah. are you arguing? If he's giving, if you see this guy as progression, and obviously your shit's well thought out. Yeah. Why? Why would you not just take the advice or don't take the advice? But why are you like? Yeah. Clapping oh, dude, back at it. Yeah. I had. I mean, I had twenty five to thirty messages in my request that were like, "Hey, man, I was following the argument between you and Jared, and like, oh, I'm so confused, and so many people tell me this, and like, oh, I don't know what to do. I'm like, dude, what? Just like shoulder press. Like, who gives a fuck? You can do three three lateral raise movements and still do a shoulder press and shoulder. That's raise. what I do. We do Especially that anyway. We do we do that yeah, anyways. Like, Me and Paul yeah. do a, a yeah. press and three isolations. Yep. Shoulder. Yeah. But, you know, I will say this. I remember back when um, I think it was one of the first programs, John, when you're working with John, when he combined chest with shoulders together. Yeah. I like that. I yeah, really so like I'll that. Do, I'll do like a I do a lateral movement on my chest day, but it's mostly a chest day. And then on my shoulder day, I'll do like two laterals, a rear and two presses. And then I do biceps. So like I, I have some increased frequency with like a lateral movement. OK. Yeah. Time so, yeah, I, do, I do two chest movements on my shoulder day as well. So the thing, yeah. the thing Paul was talking about though, one, it was because I had good shoulders. So he was yeah. like, let's combine them so we can do two leg days or two back days or yeah. two, two arm days. Right. But also, uh, we also had a separate shoulder day. Yeah. Remember we used to do shoulders, yeah. we used to do chest and then a little bit of shoulder and then we do shoulder and triceps. Together. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Uh, so we still hit shoulders twice. But listen, I guess, these are, I guess it's all really point. individualistic though. So like, it's not like I could suggest that to everybody. Nobody what, should just do that because I'm doing it. But wait a minute, Justin. What I think this is ultimately the point I always try and get to is what was in your DMs. People are messaging mm -hmm. you going, I'm so confused. And I'm like, just fucking do it. What's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. It's too worse for you. Gonna, if you do, if you shoulder press and you see growth, great. If you see shoulder press and you don't see growth, don't do it anymore. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. like it's not, you don't but, I, to... but I'm telling you, it's never going to be a detriment to your shoulder development to implement a fucking shoulder press. For sure, yeah. No, you're yeah. never going to shrink your shoulders doing shoulder press. No. I just mean like, this is what I mean about overcomplication. It's like, yes. do you don't have to think about it that hard. I know. Mm -hmm. I if, know. You do, if you do a shoulder press and you're like, holy fuck, my shoulders are fucking swole as fuck, or mm -hmm. my weight's growing up every week on a, on a shoulder press, then something's yeah. going right. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I get the guys like, well, how do you manage uh, volume and recovery if I'm pressing twice a week? <laughs> here's a rule. Here's a rule. Like, for, dude, here's like, I just tell everybody, you're just, you're overthinking it, especially yeah. like new guys. That I know that don't even really know how to train and take sets to fucking true failure. Like you could do 20 sets of shoulder press because the way you do it, it's not, a, it's not going to fucking bury you, you know, Plus you got even, no injuries or anything yet. Your joints are fresh, you know, like, yeah, I mean, I, I always encourage like an, an intelligent thought out approach, but like, holy fuck, the amount of overthinking that happens. Is, but I think, uh, but I think that's part of the reason we should be like, sometimes we argue nuance on this podcast. Yeah. And I think we should be bringing it back to basics a bit. So people understand, like, here's right. a general, general rule for recovery. If you're sore for more than three or four days, you're doing too much. Well, listen, I press on Tuesday for a chest press and I'll, and then I press on uh, Saturday for shoulders. So yeah. there's lots of rest in between, right? Yeah. Keep shit, Anytime keep shit apart. Yeah. But you yeah. do that, but you do that. So you're not training a sore muscle. But then right, we have right, Mike, right, Mike right. coming on here saying he did legs two days in a row. <laughs> no, no, no. But there's, listen, there's special circumstances and special, but, like, there's, listen, yeah. there's exceptions to every rule. Of course. And a lot of things, a lot of things will work in bodybuilding, but we're saying like, as a general rule, you right. shouldn't, you shouldn't be sore for more than three, four days. If you are, you're probably burying yourself too much. Yeah. Right? Would you guys agree with that? Oh, or, it's entirely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, cause that's what John, John used to tell me, look, you can dig yourself into a hole, but make sure you can get out of it. Well, I used to I used to be sore from one leg day to the next. And I'll train them once a week and I'd be sore for seven fucking yeah, days. Right. And my legs yeah. did not grow until I chilled the fuck out. And yeah. then I made sure within three days I was recovered. That's how that's how exactly how I was. Yeah. It'd be like the sixth day, I'd be like, Okay, I think I'm ready to go tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, but it's just, I also think that's why I got like all those little injuries because my yeah. fucking legs were always fucked up. They never yeah. like yeah. they never got yeah. full recovery. Yeah. Yeah. So but but I think, yeah, I think I think it's good to discuss nuance, but I think it's, I think we need to start uh, impressing upon people. Like it's not that like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, well, I told one guy, cause he, he asked, he's like, hey, what, what do you think is the right amount of volume? Should I do one top set and a back off set? Is it okay if I do a rest pause set? I just said, dude, just do your, your four sets and then throw a rest pause in. And if in three, four days you're recovered, then fine. 
If it doesn't affect anything, then fine. If you're progressing, then fine. If you find that your shoulders are beat up and a few days or three, four days goes by and you're not recovered, then pull it. It's not, it's, there's no way to find out unless you implement and just adjust from there. And I can't tell you. Well, you know, we, all, we all know some people that can train ridiculous volume. Like yeah. when, when, when uh, Roman talks about doing 10 sets of leg press, no, dude, 99% of people can't fucking do that. And when he's talking about 10 sets, he's actually doing 10 hard it's a failure. Yeah. Well, think about, think about like Seth. Seth is like that. Seth yeah, does a ton of, Seth does a ton of volume. Yeah. And it works for him. It's like yeah. that. You're right. That's part of the individuality of it is only, you know, certain guys can do certain things and other guys can't. Mm -hmm. It's like, you have to test yourself. That's why I always say to people, like if you're 20, stop trying to figure it out and just do it and learn yeah. as you go, because you're not going to, Nobody can give you the answer because your body is going to be different than yeah, the audience. It's going to be different. Yeah. It's, a, it's a thing you just need to figure out for yourself. And listen, there's value in like running shit for fucking four weeks and be like, holy fuck, I'm smoked. I need to back off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, look, yeah. we all, like, you know, me and Justin might have a similar premise, but we've still trained enough to have some individuality amongst us, if, even in that same premise, you know? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, they're, they're still like, okay, we have the same system and same type of training and same kind of overview. And, you know, ideas, but like, there's still going to be, you know, pretty significant differences in there that are just individuality that we've learned about ourselves through training and implementing, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So the Chicago pro is how long? 17 weeks? 17 weeks. Yeah. And how much have you come down already? You've been dieting for how long? Seven weeks? Uh, yeah, we started like 24 weeks out, but that was mostly just like getting me ahead and then clearing up some digestive issues I was having. I was just kind of so we really talked about that a couple of weeks ago. He said he'd cut back your calories, get your appetite up. Yeah, yeah. He pulled Does me back. Work? Does it work? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm like starving for all my food, but I'm mean, still eating enough food that I'm satiated and I performance is trending up. I honestly, so I think, I really think that appetite is kind of an underutilized tool in bodybuilding. I think your body can respond and grow when it wants more fuel and and maybe not respond and grow as much if it wants less fuel if that makes it can makes i ask it. can i ask you a question i want to know what you guys think so in, when i was bodybuilding i was force feeding to get to a certain mm -hmm. weight and i was usually like way oversaturated like this is a word i use because i was just eating way yeah 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 and i was heavy in the off season whatever so i found that when i'm dieting you get to this really sweet spot where your calories are almost perfect where your strength is still going up Yep. Yeah. But, you're, but you're almost eating like a lot less than you're used to. Absolutely. That's where I'm at right now. But you can't do that all off season. So what the fuck I don't is think, the answer? I think that you still need to push your body to new set points. And I think you need to hit these weights that are uncomfortable. And I think you need to spend some time there. But I think there it always has to be a game of push and pull. You can't just fucking redline guys and have them force feed for an entire six, seven, eight That's months. What I used to do. Yeah, you got to so, take breaks. So Ian, you know? do you agree with that? Do you agree with like, to get like you know how everybody says oh i'm stuck at 220 right and sometimes you got to feed yourself past that sure. did you do that in your career and then now you've learned to go up and down or do you just keep oh yeah i mean i had i had years like decades where i was just fucking force feeding myself like non-stop in off seasons you know just to get the weight up and get it to stick and you know get it to stay there and hold it for a while um yeah. but yeah, I mean, now i don't push it nearly the same like that so that so that really good feeling where you're you feel like i don't know if inflammation is the right word but you feel like your body's just functioning better like five to seven yeah, yeah. yeah inflammation five to seven. is a the inflammation is a great word so I mean, that's, that's what i that's what i was thinking like five to eight weeks is usually like that sweet spot where you're eating enough where you're full but you're like strength is going up and you're still losing fat definitely but yeah. you even though that feels really good it would be detrimental for a new guy to be like i'm going to do that all off season Maybe for an entirety of an off season, I still think there should be. Well, I think we also need to consider the fact that building muscle requires a lot of calories and you need to be able to be progressive with those calories and be able to eat more food over a period of time. Like most of these guys that are small, 180 pounds can't eat a lot of food. So you need to introduce a lot of food and get these yeah. guys eating a lot of food. So you can, I mean, you can, you know, train and build a metabolism. So you need to right. be able to push up into new set points if, even if it's just with calories so then i guess we'll take for my example and to kind of use me as an example to help younger guys coming up we would mm -hmm. say you still got to push yourself past a set limit like your calories to a point that's uncomfortable but don't do it for fucking six seven months straight yeah absolutely i mean and you you've seen this time and time again where like you see somebody start a prep and then like 
fuck from 16 to eight weeks you're like this guy fucking grew a ton in this last two months you can just see it and it's just because everything's fucking clicking and obviously drugs are present but i think you can get to a point where your body is more efficient and more responsive just because you're not force feeding we've seen the always seen the opposite too though i've seen guys who are like 250 260 and then they end up on stage at 210 yeah, I think that's, oh, yeah. I think that's how, like, maybe just how p- some people carry weight. I think some people can be deceiving in what they look like. And then you start pulling fat off and you realize how well they hold body fat. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you see a guy that's like some guys, like, I don't know, like, Brett's one of those guys that he looks super lean even in his off season. Then you realize he can 30, pull 30, 40 pounds off him. You didn't think yeah. he had. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. like water. For me, like I, I know I'm when I'm fucking forty pounds away from stage weight. I look, I look you, like forty pounds look, of shit. Yeah. You look like seventy pounds over stage. But weight. I wonder if that'll change as you exactly. get more uh, advanced into your it, career. It, ha- it definitely has year to year. It has uh, like it's more difficult for me to get chubby. But when yeah. I'm hanging with Fuad and <laughs> well, that's like help. <laughs> eating <laughs> <not> burritos <laughs> and listen, Taco Bell. When I got there was a period of time like when I got to two fifty on stage, I would be two ninety, two ninety five in the off season. But I yeah. would be, I still felt pretty lean. Like I didn't feel yeah. it. Does, it does seem like your body just starts to hold that weight differently. Like even if it's the same amount of body fat, it just yeah. looks different. You know, but, but you got that much muscle. I don't know if it's the same amount of body fat. Maybe it's just more because you're so much bigger. Maybe it's more water, more glycogen. More water. Yeah. More yeah. Everything, right. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Ian, are you high or what's up, man? No, I'm just listening. <laughs> He's oh, taking okay. all that. Dude, I hate, I'm fucking taking him to school right now, dude. He's learning. That's <laughs> 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 the university here, huh? <laughs> he's like got the secrets um yeah the secrets so the appetite came back yeah so now is the plan to keep getting you more and more hungry or is it to start feeding you back up no more? like to start feeding me up not necessarily like increase overall calories it's just already having high days implemented and feeding me through the prep i mean honestly we didn't we didn't implement a high day last year until i was like nine weeks out because i just was I, I could I was not I wasn't hungry like 10 tell weeks everybody out, tell hungry. everybody what tell everybody what you did wrong just because we're all have to be totally honest tell everybody what you did wrong your last prep what's what that do you, wait, oh, what do you know big... wait what do you know Paul I know where you're going with this with this cheat the cheat days no what what kind of dirt do you have on me Paul it wasn't the no. cheat day. he didn't oh, have okay. that many he didn't have that no many cheat I didn't I didn't I didn't cheat on my diet or anything like that I mean Matt had like you know an off-plan meal on the weekend till I was like you know, 14. no, he made he made a foo ad mistake. Go ahead. So, listen, I I, I sent you, I sent foo some pictures, and I think I was what 228 in the pictures, and I was three weeks out. And you look and you're like, this guy could maybe drop five pounds, or you know, he's yeah. I was close, yeah. but yeah. at that time, I didn't, I thought I was fucking fat. So, Matt's giving me cardio, and then I'm like, I'm taking my dogs on these walks. I got these trails by my house. So I, I'm walking these trails and I start sprinting hills. I'm just doing like these fucking hill sprints trying to, you know, get shredded. I don't know, dude. I it's wanted the, to be shredded. It's, it's the Ian. You've never done that. You've done the typical, like, I could be more shredded if I do more work. You've never done that? Uh, when you were younger? Only with training, not with cardio. Oh, so listen, I to, I this was the cardio. first, this was the first time I actually got in like actual real stage conditioning so i was obsessing over it like yeah. even though i was peeled and my glutes were in i was still was like i could be more peeled I could be <laughs> yeah more. you're in rocky mode you know? yeah were you, telling, were you telling your coach that you're doing this extra cardio well i told him about the walks i didn't tell him like i'm sprinting hills i don't okay. know i was just stupid dude it just yeah. you know you're listening to fucking you know the rocky music in your headphones and you feel yeah. that and you're doing it's not, that, it's not that stupid it's not that stupid because when you're looking at yourself this is the thing if you've never competed before this is a thing people don't understand when you're looking at yourself every single day you don't realize how shredded you are until you look back after the show. Yeah, you have no yeah. idea. And honestly, I, those so, pictures I sent you, you look, I'm clearly in shape. And I, yeah. at that time, I thought it like, you I think you're I, fat. You think you're fat. Yeah, yeah I you did, can pinch I, a little bit here and there. I did this week. So we did three shows in 2015 before the Tampa Pro. John was like, hey, go to the uh, hotel gym and just do like 15 minutes of light cardio. Just walk on the treadmill. This was like the Thursday or the Friday night. I can't, it was the night before the show. I'm like, all right. So I go, I end up doing an hour because I'm like, I'm going to be fucking, I'm going to be dry tomorrow. And I'm fucking do like an hour. And then I end up flat on stage. Yeah. But you just, you just don't. But honestly, listen, there's, yeah. if there was a time for me to do that and figure that out, it was as an amateur. So it's, oh, yeah. Listen, it's I'd fine. rather, if I was a coach, I'd rather have an athlete like that than somebody who didn't want to do anything. 
Yeah. yeah, you just want him to tell you though. That way, you could adjust his diet accordingly. Yeah, I mean, want someone motivated, obviously. Yeah, I told, I right. told you, I like, I looked it back at my like my weight log for that last like two weeks, and he was, it was like high day every other day, three high days in a row, and it just got. To, he couldn't really fill me back up because I just because he's running hills every. You're day. burning. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you're not telling him that you're doing burn up next time. <laughs> it's stupid. Yeah. Yeah, but so, well, you want to win so bad. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, yeah, I was just like, I just fucking all I cared about was being peeled. So you mm. ended up at two eleven. Yeah, the, mor- the, the morning of the, of the show, show is two eleven. Yeah, and hopefully you'll be on stage yeah. in Chicago at two thirty, two thirty five. That's uh, yeah, I think two thirty is uh, yeah. low two thirties. Well, it's exciting, man, because you know a lot of people will be like, oh, 230, 235 is too small, but I think when you I think have, my proportions and my shape, have, yeah, you don't look two thirty. When your oh, shape, that. when your shape looks a certain way, it's like Derek. Derek was two thirty on stage. Yeah, he yeah. Was second in the world. So. You know, you never know. You never know yep. how it's going to turn out on stage. So we got blessing. Anybody else? I don't know of anybody else. Just blessing. Okay. And we don't have. And for the Arnold Brazil, we have uh, Baruz. That's all we know. And and potentially Sergio. Why wouldn't Andrew do the Arnold Brazil? I think Andrew, oh. dude. Andrew died. I mean, he's burnt out. Probably. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, he needs to requalify still, eh? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said it. Yeah, I'm like. Because obviously he's going to be a contender at the Olympia, so I'm like, let's just get out of the way. And then you I would know. assume he'd aim for something towards the end. Okay, well, I don't, I don't extend that same invitation that I gave to Sergio to Andrew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Andrew, you can fuck right off. Thank okay, you. but now, <laughs> see, now you got yourself in trouble because that's either a compliment to Andrew or an insult to Sergio. <laughs> well, I, I, oh yeah, hey, Sergio's an amazing bodybuilder, but I've never lost to Sergio. I've only lost to Andrew, so. You know, <laughs> That's true. Are you just doing one and done, Ian, or is your plan? Are you still talking about Orlando? Maybe. No, I, honestly, I don't know. I mean, we'll we'll get Toronto done, win Toronto, and then we'll kind of we'll see from there. I mean, I, I'm yeah. not 100 percent sure. Um, you know how I am. I'd like to do more shows, but I don't know if that's best time and resources. Yeah. Spent for me have you talked? Time. Have you talked to Matt about that at all, or what? Yeah, I think I think Matt would prefer to get me in and get me out and into yeah. Olympia mode as soon as yeah. possible. Yeah. 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 I don't know though. I mean, yeah, you, could put, on, apart. you could put on size from between t- Toronto and, uh, and the Olympia. Yeah. I mean, look I, look, I don't know how much size I'm putting on at this point in my career, but um, you know, improvements. And I think also just, there's something to being, you know, be said for being a little more fresh um, you know, and having some time down from the anabolics and, and time from, you know, pressing diet down and stimulants and all that stuff, I think could be valuable when, you know, going to the Olympia a little more fresh, you know? Yeah. 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 You have like five months, right? Did after, guys... after Toronto. Yeah. First week in November is the Olympia, right? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that'd be nice. Did you guys hear if they're changing anything with the Olympia this year? Like as far as qualifications go, or are they still going to have another like 25, 30 guys? I don't I mean, there's no, points. there's no point system. So that only de- that deletes so only two, winners, three or three. Yeah, yeah. Winner, win and you're in. Yeah, yeah. Somebody said something I thought was valuable. They thought they thought that uh, you have to win two European shows for a qualification. Oh, they don't have as, they don't count for as many points. No, 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 no. That, that's not what's happening. Somebody oh. I can't remember who it was, but somebody made that suggestion. I uh, imagine it's going to get to that point where it's going to be Olympia qualifiers. I don't think they should do that because no, because then no one I mean, would do the non qualifiers. Yeah, who would do no the show? Do that. That's I true think, too. But I think if they say, "Look, you know, the, some of those European shows are like week, you know, back to back." So they're like, "Look, if you win these shows, you got to win two European shows." Well, then what? Like yeah, what you do is you make a point system only for the European tour shows. So the European shows are point system, and like, say you win two of them, it's enough points. You need like twenty points to qualify in the European shows. You know, if if yeah. you did that, if you did that, you could just do points for all of the smaller shows whether they're european or north american right yeah yeah. but i could see how you're gonna get a big disparity in the shows that are straight up olympia qualifiers though they'll be so much heavier and so much better and like if you're a show promoter you're gonna not want to promote a show that isn't an olympia qualifiers approach i I don't want this fucking b-string bullshit you know you'd have to pay Uh, more for the Olympic qualifier yeah Yeah. i honestly think the only solution the best solution that i think i've heard is one pro show a month, and only Mr. Olympia qualifies. Then you end up with just then you end up with just the cream of the crop at the fucking Olympia. But there's far more than one pro show a month now. 
I yeah, know that's I what, that's my whole, that's my whole point though. I don't yeah. think men's open it's a huge issue like it is in some. I don't think having twenty five or thirty guys in the men's open is oh, bad. By any stretch. Like almost fifty classic. No, guys. no, I think. Yes. I, yeah. I, don't think thir- I don't think thirty is bad at all in the men's open. Is it? Are, a aren't a lot of the the pro the qualifiers for the classic guys like top two? Isn't that a thing? Yeah, there's a thing, but that's not mm. the only point. Think of this. Think about how awesome and quick the Arnold was, because there's only like ten people in each category. Sure, but you also like. That's not – think of the Olympics, man. You have heats and semifinals. Like, there's a not, 200 guys. I think just having 10 guys doesn't make it more elite. I'm not saying – well, it kind of does. No, because you're still having those same guys, but now you have more depth of field. I think having a better spread of, like, 30 of the best guys from Europe, from Asia, from everywhere makes it an international contest. You have more depth of field. You can kind of see where it's, like, world rankings, top 20, you know? Yeah, I think the world guys would... makes it is good for an invitational like the Arnold, um, but I don't think it works for something that's like the world championships, like the okay. Olympia. Okay, but hear this: so they don't place anybody after fifteen. That's number okay. one. Sure. Number number two, you're still it's still a world competition. The European guys still have a chance to qualify. Yeah, I'm just saying they don't. There should only be fifteen guys or ten. Not ten well, is too yeah. little. Fifteen guys. But why? Because, dude, then you don't have people going on stage at two in the morning. But I mean, th- we were only going on two in the morning because of classes like bikini and men's physique. That no, happened. I know, but I'm saying you should do that. I'm saying you should do that for all categories, though. Yeah, but I'm saying if you had 25 to 30 in all classes, I don't oh, think then that you'd be okay. Problem. I think it's but, because you're having classes that are double the size of the men's open. So now yeah. it's like having a full extra class. So you, you know, I think because... that's crazy. But I don't think 25 or 30. I don't think four or five callouts, five callouts is is bad, especially for an elite show like that. So you and like, look, even the guys that were coming in the last call out, like Vlad and these guys are still excellent bodybuilders, you know? Didn't say, didn't say they weren't excellent bodybuilders. Yeah. I'm just saying, so you think... The- I also think it's good to give more show opportunities for the promoters, for people to compete in. I think it's just good. I don't think there's any detriment. Okay, to it. okay. So basically you think, you, you think the answer is that the other classes were too big. Yes, I think 30 is good. I think 40, 50, 60 is too many. But I think for the men's open, it didn't feel to me like there was too many of us. You I know, was, like I thought I, it was a great amount. 30 guys, it felt like it was super competitive. There was a lot of depth of field. It felt like previous Olympias, it's like I beat guys, but like a lot of guys weren't there. And like, you know, it's like this year we had like, it felt like it was very determined like groups. Like you had like the A group, then you had like the B group with like, you know, guys like me and James and, and, uh, and Charles and like those guys that were kind of the midsection. And then you had the C section, you know, it felt like it was very, like there was set groups where Did sometimes feel- when it's only 12 or 15 guys, it feels like there's an A group and then like the B group, you know? Gonna, Did you I'm feel gonna... like you got a, sorry, Fuad, no, I, no. I just want to ask one thing. No, Did you feel ahead. like you got a fair look in? Did you feel like you were compared fairly? Like, and you got enough like time to yeah. show you like, yeah. yeah I mean, okay. They, they ran us through call outs. Good. I mean, everyone got time. We all got our individual. I mean, I think there's more than enough time. It didn't feel like, it didn't feel like the prejudging was long. I didn't feel like I was on stage for a long time. And it, didn't, um, it didn't feel like a lengthy show by any means for me. And it, and it didn't feel rushed. No, it felt, it no? felt okay. like any other show to me, you know? Okay. What about, I feel like 20 per category is the max. Okay, yeah. Sure. Cause I feel like how after, do you, it's so tough. How do you control that? Though? Well, no, this is what I was going to say. Yeah. What if you did, this is a total revamp of the system. But what if you did a season? Me and Ian talked about this before. Yeah, we talked about this. What if you did a season, just like a basketball season or a baseball season that was for four or five months, and you had shows every weekend or every other weekend, whatever you want to, whatever strategy you want to do them, and everybody gets points. And the top 20 in each class, in each category, those top 20 points qualify for the Olympia. The only problem with this, and it's it's the people, tough. Who, the people who compete more, you're going to say. Well, yeah, I, it's tough because look, I'm all for if you're a competitive athlete, you should compete as much as you can and it's your job. And I think that that's great. But in the world of bodybuilding, it's a little different, you know, competing 15 times in a year as a pro bodybuilder versus yeah. playing 15 NFL games or 15 basketball yeah. games Agreed. is very different in terms of your longevity and health. Yeah, so sure. if you're now promoting guys, it's like, hey, to get to the Olympia, you might have to compete three, four, five times plus the Olympia. But what if? I yeah. think it can get dangerous, you know. But I have an idea. Yeah. What if you did, let's say your your season was four months long, right? What if you did a high point uh show once in each of those months? Like what if one of the shows Look, I mean there's obviously ways you could structure this for sure. I just mean like what if one of the shows in that month you get a show every weekend, right? What if one of the shows was worth triple the amount of the other three shows? That way if you have a really good guy who doesn't want to compete a lot, 
he can nail that fucking show and be done and get qualified. Yeah, but see, this is the thing: is that now you have, since you leave guys and you leave a lot of guys in limbo for a season. So if you're like a super A tier guy and you go win the first show in the first month of a four month season, and then everyone competes at every single other show and is racking up points. Now you might be like sitting there till the fourth month and be like, shit, I got to die for a show or don't die. It leaves a lot of guys in a weird limbo when it's only like that, you know, yeah, but it would make some of the elite guys compete twice or three times. Yeah, I'm going to get some food. It's, it's twice, but it's not a definite enough twice. It leaves you in weird spots, you know, unless you made like, that. I don't unless... know. If I need... You almost need to plan to always do two shows then. Unless you made those big shows worth so much more that you're almost guaranteed to be in. Yeah, but then it's, you're still going to get the same weird discrepancy in the shows then. You know, because then like if you're com- if you're doing one of the smaller shows, are you going to have to win 10 of them to get enough points to get to the Olympia then, you know? Well, you could ha- you still have a first tier, second tier and a third tier point system. Yeah, I know. So like the right. third tier point system, who's going to do those shows? The guys who don't who can't beat the guys in the first or second tier. Yeah, but then even if you win a third tier show, it's the guys winning the first and second are gonna have so much more points than you. You're gonna have to win fifteen B C tier shows. Exactly, but then you'll only end up with ten or fifteen guys at the show. <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying. And then think about it. Then the season's over. People can take time to get their health in check and fucking get ready for the next season, just like every other sport. Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, I don't think it's a bad idea. I think it could work. I think I mean, as a fan, I hate it. We need to try it and see kind of just naturally how the pitfalls occur, you know? I don't really know how that would work logistically until it actually happened. But for me, honestly, as a competitor, it'd be kind of fucking stressful, you know? You're like sitting there watching the points every day. You're like, this guy's doing this show. I got to do this show. Yeah, you got to be strategic about it. But it could be more exciting for people. It could be exciting for sure. There's two ways to think about it. The people watching are now actually watching the point standing. And they're like, holy fuck. Who's gonna do this? Somebody gotta jump in at the, the end. Ian's gotta do this show, or yeah. Hunter's gonna pass. Him. <laughs> they all got. They all gotta stay in shape all year long, or for the four months. But the other side of me, as a fan, says, "Fuck!" Then I got six months of downtime, or eight months of downtime with no shows. Yeah. So yeah. then that's the part that fucking blows because I kind of like that there's a show every you know few weeks. I think they should just have like Olympia qualifiers, and then the other shows goes on a point system, and you allow you allow like the next ten or whatever. That's so that a good idea too. That's that way you cap idea. it at like 20 or so, you know? Yeah, if you did like five shows that were pro the Olympia qualifiers, yeah. and then the next 10 right. are all on points. Right, and then you allow the next, the the, the top 10 in points qualify, or the top 15 in points qualify, yeah, whatever. That would work, where you, and you would still get a discrepancy, but at least if there's an, a few enough of those elite shows, they're not going to oversaturate all the people. Right, yeah, like and five max, like maybe. Five or six, you know, five. Yeah. And then you have like 10 other of the shows, you know, and then 10 people in points. That could work. I like yeah, it, Paul. That... Paul, call, uh, call Tyler. Call Tyler. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not that close to Tyler yet. I'll, I'll, I'll text Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, it. I just listened. I so I had to sit there and do the commentary at the Arnold, and it was fucking beautiful. Literally, two hour pre judging. I think on Saturday was only an hour. And also, you got to remember it's because they didn't have two twelve or figure. But even if they oh, did, right. but even if they did, it would be instead of. Two hours well, of it, was eight, or, yeah. it must I have just, been easier for your prep too, Fuad. That way you you know more about each competitor too. Well, other than cares, having to know. Who, who cares about the broadcast guys? That that's irrelevant because <laughs> they get sheets anyway that kind of give them a oh, rundown, rundown okay. of everybody. But I just think people can't sit like we were at the Olympia on Friday night till fucking you know, it was a five hour fucking show. Like that's yeah. Not, entertainment yeah. entertainment wise it's shit. Paper yeah. pay per view wise it's shit. And yeah. athlete athlete wise it's shit. You but could make it a you could make it a three day show, but then it's obviously changes the cost structure for a for a uh, a promoter. Rent, you know, yeah. yeah, four days and things like that. You know? Well, and if you did a three day show, you can't make the bodybuilders compete for all three days. So how many people are going to show? No, no, up? no. I'm just saying, yeah. like, have yeah. on Friday have bodybuilding done on the Friday physique yeah. done on the set. Like, so you have like say two classes every day. You know but what I'm? But yeah. what I was going to say is, I think, and this could be my own bias, but I think a lot of people go for the bodybuilding. So if you got it done on Friday you'd sell less tickets on Saturday. Uh, yeah, but then you solve that by just making it so that you buy a ticket for the entire weekend. Well, it's one ticket, yeah. yeah. One ticket, yeah. You yeah. Just make it one ticket for the Olympia weekend, and it's $100. And you, know? you can go to whatever days you want. Go to whatever you want. Yeah. Only option. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea, too. Yeah, I think then the only issue is the venue cost. Uh, you have to rent for yeah. an extra, extra... It's like, day. obviously, renting Planet Hollywood for three days instead of two is an extra third more, you know? Like, yeah. yeah, but are they going back to Florida long-term now? 
I don't know. I know next year we are. I, I could ask. I think I know the date for the 2024 Olympia, but I don't know where it is. It's, in, it's, back, it's back in October the next year. Um, oh, that's early. great. Uh, yeah, but I don't. I, I think it might be in Florida again. I'm not positive, though. I really uh, liked it when the Olympia was September. End of September. Yeah. It's always perfect. The I fall. think September, October is great. I think once you get December, it's too late. You know. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I would go first week of November this year is not terrible to me. Um, you know, and I do like the idea of later months in Florida where it's not so hot if you're going to have the Olympia there. Or like Vegas in December this year was actually kind of nice. Yeah. It was cool. Um, I do like that as a competitor. Like having September in Florida is is not nice as a competitor, obviously. Even uh, Vegas is a little warm. Or Vegas still. in September, it's fucking hot, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's like semantics. Of October, the October in Florida is okay? It's still pretty fucking hot, yeah. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. I, uh, as a, listen, as a supplement owner, I welcome Florida. Because doing much cheaper. Because doing everything in fucking Vegas is so expensive. Yeah, you know? like taking the team out to dinner for three nights and fucking hotels, you know, hotels and everything. It's just so fucking. I mean, expensive. I've, I've said it countless times. As a competitor, I do prefer Florida significantly over Vegas. Less Even busy. as a competitor, is it l- less busy. I'll be right back for it. Sorry, busy. it's less busy. It's way easier in terms of like. You know, you get an Airbnb, like that's in a good area, like n- near gyms. You're not like valeting your car in Vegas Strip hotels and yeah. going up and down fucking escalators where, you know, there's a hotel lobby full of, th- look, I love meeting fans and talking to fans, but when you just don't need to go train or do something like Olympia week, sometimes you just need your your time, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Vegas is a little busier, you know? Um, and there's a little more distractions and it's a little busier. I find Florida, it's like you can just rent a nice house, get your car, you know, especially for me, because I am I live in Florida, I can just drive there, have my own vehicle there. It's super easy logistically, you know. Is there any other cities it would work in? Like Texas would be good, no? I mean, yeah. I mean, look, there's probably venues. I mean, you have, you know, big sports teams everywhere and, and you know, big theaters and stuff everywhere and expo centers. I mean, you, we have expo centers big enough in Ottawa to have the Olympia, you know. I mean, there's venues everywhere. Um, you know, I think you just need it somewhere where there's – good enough hotels and housing and a good enough venue um, and a good airport location, you know? Did you like it? That's Did the best like thing about it? Vegas is like you can fly into fucking, you know, McCarran or whatever that airport is. It's like three minutes from the strip, you know? Did you like it better when it was moved from city to city all over the world? Or do you think it's better when it's in one place like a UFC or boxing or even though yeah, they I mean, move, they move around, but like, yeah, I mean, now of- obviously because I've done a few Olympias, I'd like to have a change of venue. Like I've done Florida, I've done Vegas, I've done the Orleans, I've done the plan Hollywood, I've done Florida, you know? Like I, I would like to go see some new places, um, but as a competitor, routine is nice and knowing the areas and where you're going to stay and being able to plan. Like, look, I know Orlando now and I know Vegas now like the back of my hand. Like I know where the gyms I want to train at. I know where the good areas to stay are. I know where the grocery stores are. You know, it's easy. Like, and I mean, let's be serious. Like, obviously it's a, a, a factor as well. You now have majority of the athletes are American and now you yeah. start putting that show overseas, you start having the logistics of a lot of bodybuilders having to deal with getting drugs and traveling with drugs and all these things, which I think is just not something we should do, you know? Yeah. 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 I speak personally on that one. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, Justin, are you thinking Olympia or are you not thinking that far ahead? How's your mindset work right now? Of course you're thinking Olympia. Of course I'm thinking Olympia, yeah. Well, listen, I'm not saying of course. I'm, no, I, no, no, no. The reason I ask that is because I think everybody's different. Like, mm-hmm. look, if you if you talk to Samson, if you talk to Samson uh, two years ago, his goal was, I want to qualify for the Olympia. That was like his entire thing. But if you asked him, I don't know if he would be certain that he was going to get there. Well, but yeah. he had a few he had a few years and few shows where he wasn't very successful. Like, I mean, yeah. I remember doing Portugal with him where he's in like the third call out. You know, yeah. Um, you know, like I, I remember his his career wasn't like. It wasn't like Knicks where he like won the New York Pro and won the Arnold and like you know. So obviously how your how you start out changes. Like when I, I my first season, you know, I was coming fourth, fifth, sixth at shows. Like the idea of winning a show and going to the Olympia wasn't something I really fantasized about at that point. You know. Okay, that's a that's a good point. So Justin, and I'm I don't mean to be like making this whole thing about you. I just think it's an inter- interesting dynamic. Yeah. It, do you is your, are your expectations higher for yourself because you're friends with so many successful pros like you're friends with Nick and Ian and Brett and like so do you have a, a pressure well, or an expectation? I think I do want to be on the same level of my peers, my friends. Yeah. Of course, 
Yeah. But I also think that I can be a very good bodybuilder. I believe that 100%. Okay. I think I can go into the show and win. I think if I'm fucking nailed and it go, I think it can go my way. I think it can. It's possible. I believe that. Yeah. Um, you know, and if it doesn't, then I think it's just a matter of time. I, I know, I, I know that I can be better than a lot of these guys winning shows. I just don't know if I'm there yet, but I know I can be. Okay. Who, I'm going to put, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who can you be better than? <laughs> don't answer that. All, all answer it. It. <laughs> <laughs> he said I could be better than people winning shows. I want to know who he's talking about. <laughs> I'm just joking. objectively just when I look at myself. I'm and joking. I'm at, I'm no, joking. no, I'm just saying when I look at my physique and I look at myself and I look at my shape, I mean, I understand like bodybuilding and bodybuilding judging. I know I can get in very good condition. I know I have fucking great shape. I think that coupled with the right amount of size can be taking time to get the size. And yeah, yeah. I think I, 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 think, I think your physique is entering the sport at the right time too. You know, with your shape. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. You know, and that's not. I don't mean to say it like in a cocky or arrogant way. I just think objectively. Oh. I think you know, it's only a matter of time before I think I'm doing very Listen, well. I'll, I'll tell you this. If there's anything I could have changed about my own career, it was been I would have been more confident. So Me it's too. good. It's 100%. good that it's For good sure. that you have like that. Yeah. Mindset. I, I envy I envy people that can like say that and mean it. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, even even you now though, and you've, I mean, you've demonstrated to yourself, so you can say it now because you proved it. But yeah, you know, but I, but like, I still have a lot of doubts in myself, especially after this Olympia. I mean, it, honestly, it wasn't really easy for a first like the first few months after this Olympia. I really thought I was like completely washed up as a fucking garbage bodybuilder you know yeah and like even the thought of like competing again and like you know getting on stage and losing to someone that i've been blown out of the water for 10 years was a very real fear in my mind you know i'm like fuck is that where i'm at or am i just letting one bad placing dictate who i think i am you know like i, mm -hmm. I don't think that's where i'm at in my career but is it you know is it blah 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 like you know, I, I know I sound crazy too because I did come eleventh at like one of the best Olympias, so it's not like I did bad. Yeah. No, it doesn't sound. Um, crazy. And I beat a lot of amazing guys, but to me, it was just a very embarrassing showing that did knock my confidence a lot for sure. You know, it doesn't yeah. sound crazy because people need to understand you're speaking in relative terms. So yeah, when yeah. you're when you're seventh in the world, two years in a row, your expectation you wanna, you wanna, your wanna, expectation is to move up. Not yeah, up. yeah. So even though see, that, the thing is, deeper. I think actually what. What I was more upset with wasn't the placing as opposed to was the performance. I was just going to say this. You know, if I yeah. come 11th and like been at my fucking best and, you know, posed well and all these things, eh, you know, I, would, I wouldn't have been ecstatic, but I wouldn't have been nearly like the feelings I felt were embarrassment of my performance, not embarrassment of my placing. I agree. You know, yeah. I mean, look, I think there was amazing bodybuilders that I still beat. I mean, like, you know, fucking Crizo and James and like, you know, all these guys, Antoine and, and, and Charles that were all behind me, you know. Akeem and shit, I beat these guys, but like to me, it was it was a lesser version of me, which I was embarrassed yeah. at. You know? yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's always harder when it's always harder when you know you went on stage and you could have been better and you weren't. Yeah, yeah. that's always well, that's always especially the my thing. posing. My posing, especially, was one of those things. I'm like, fuck, I wish I could just do it again. You know, yeah. like get my fucking mind right and like my confidence. And I, honestly, I I pose a very much so how I'm feeling. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, and yeah. which is is a, is not an asset by any means. That's a detriment. You know, I mean, you should be able to pose a hundred percent no matter how you're feeling and look i'm not a great poser to begin with um but when i'm feeling rocky mentally i pose like i fucking but then yeah. like you know shows like vancouver but, but wait, but texas wait. when i'm like feeling myself i pose well you know but that's across the board you're not alone in that because like, no, but there's like, guys like there's guys who are look samson is going to pose like samson no matter what the fuck no, he's feeling. You can, just you say. Can, no no you can see it though like Listen, Samson poses or Nick, you know. Listen, <laughs> you can see the confidence. Okay, but wait a minute. Because Samson is a good poser. Yes, but that's he, what I'm saying. It's the better he, of a poser you are, the less you can see. You know, you can hide. You can hide it, but you yeah. can. Also, yeah. But you can also see when Samson's on because his posing gets that much better. Sure, yeah. right. but he yeah. goes from being good to better. I go from being bad to okay. You know, <laughs> so it's well, like I need, to, I need to have my baseline posing at the level that even if it's not excellent, it's still passable. You know, but I mean, even Mr. Olympia, right? Like you look at Rami. When yeah. Rami when Rami's not on, his posing mm -hmm. is not his posing is not great. Like at the Olympia, yeah. Yeah. And well, then, when you seen when you seen Phil last year or the year before, you're yeah, hitting yeah. like a hands class most muscular. I was like, he's hitting that so fucking weird right now, and like that he has the best most muscular in the fucking world ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think a lot of guys. I think a lot of like, guys. You wear because me and Paul talk about it sometimes. Paul, because he's judging. You've told me before, like you can see. Yeah. You can see like bodybuilders have an aura about. You know what I. 
You know, and I see it the most, and guys get psyched out by it when you get moved out of the center spot. <clears throat> yeah. You see a guy. And a lot of times, a lot of head they judges, myself you. included, sometimes will do it on purpose, not because I'm taking you out of first place, just because I want to see some different angles or I want to show the, this side of the judging panel a yeah. different angle or something, you know. But yeah. a lot of guys automatically, you see them, they just, their shoulders drop now. They're well, like. Because hmm. they've been they've been coached since the beginning. Yeah. But when you're in the middle, you're winning. Right, and that, and I understand that that so is then, the way. So then, when they get but, pulled out, they're like, "Oh, wait a minute, what the fuck, what the fuck happened?" Right, but then on the opposite, when you put someone in the middle, and then and especially yeah. when the crowd starts cheering for them, you see it all of a sudden. They're well, remember, like, you know... remember at the Arnold, Steve was, uh, and we talked about this in the commentary. They were moving around Andrew, Nick, and Samson. Yeah, and you could see each guy's emotion change when they were put in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Nick, yeah, Nick would get in the middle. He'd start fucking waving that finger. Yeah, right. stop at his feet. Yeah. <laughs> Samson gets in there, he starts pounding on the fucking ground. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> so cool, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Andrew, Andrew had this like slick thing he was doing. He's like, he'd go like yeah, this. Like, yeah. 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 Understated. Point out, point out his packs and flex them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that, was a, that was such a fun show. I wish I was there watching. It was awesome. Dude. Yeah. But when you're in a show, like I, it only happened once to me as a, in my career. I uh, there was one show that I knew I was going to win. Just when I looked around at everybody, I just knew that I, I was going to win this show. And the way I posed was probably the best I ever posed in my life. Yeah, because the only time I ever had confidence on stage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the, all the shows that I knew I was going to win, I posed like I was I had already won. You know, like Vancouver last year. Like Vancouver, you I know, remember New York, like the year. way you posed. New York, I posed super confident, super well, like super authoritative. You know, yeah, yeah I have, I have that. that. I have that picture of me at nationals where I'm like doing that like victory pose. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't have fucking done that if I, was, <laughs> if I, didn't, if I didn't think I was going to win the show. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have been like, fucking look at me. I remember. Were you at, right. were you at Vancouver Pro last year, Paul? No, I, was, I remember looking at the pictures afterwards okay, yeah. of the videos. I was I like, man, he's posing, he's posing yeah, I mean, like he owns the show. Tampa or Texas or, you know, I remember, I knew I was going to win, you know? I remember yeah. New York. New York. The mo I don't know if you know you're going to win, but in the call outs, you stood out to me in New York. Yeah. I don't know if it's because you felt thought you were bigger than everybody or maybe you just were i just like okay he's I new york was a weird one for me because i come off that really bad tampa against hunter right before it know. that was like that fucking mentally like rocked yeah. me you know yeah yeah um and like that was like a one where it was like yo pick up your fucking bootstraps and like go on there and fucking just compete you know and it was like i think at that point i had really just like let go a bit you know i wasn't like so stressed about like everything like the placing the look like i was just like yo you look good don't worry about it go up there and fucking just have fun and it, you could see that it was just a lot more relaxed look you know yeah but let me ask you this is sometimes not being talked about is it allow you to relax yes Less pressure because you didn't do well in tampa so maybe you weren't being talked about for new york as much so maybe that gave um, you a chance to relax it, depends. I, it goes both ways because you know, obviously, if you're a seasoned pro that's won a lot of shows and you're going into a show and you're not talked about at all, uh, you're kind of like, what the fuck? Why am I not right. being talked about, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it also is nice to skate under the radar a little bit. So there, there's positives to both, you know, and it's it's nice to be touted as like, yo, this guy's going to win. And like, you feel that you're like, I know I'm going to win. They're saying that I'm going to win. I believe I'm going to win. Yeah. Fuck everybody. I'm going to win the show, you know? Yeah, and some yeah. of those are the ones I feel the best in, you know? So it depends. I mean, it, it really depends, you know? Yeah. Crazy. Um. Okay, let's uh let's do some questions for the last half hour. Yeah, this time flew. What uh, what are you eating there with all your hot sauce? <clears throat> white fish and white rice. Oh, that's the shit. That's the, the key. I'm telling you. Send them the fish video for it. White fish thins the skin, bro. I got our administrative guy that works with us comes in he's like i started on the white fish and i get a rice cake and i'm like oh yeah <laughs> you know i don't know justin do you, you don't know you don't know the fish in a rice cake do you it's older wow. so, so oh my god you've never seen it can you play i've it? never seen it before it's, 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 from, it's, it's from our time this is a classic man this is like <laughs> og fucking video yeah it's great so back it so just some context this is like a full documentary on this kid too this is just a clip so, of it just for context for people watching in case you're younger Back in the day, the theory, well, the theory kind of still is, but back in the day, the theory was you had to eat whitefish. Jay Cutler started it. The yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I knew I that asked him, when, when, we had him on the pod, when we had him on the podcast, I asked him, like, do you really believe this shit? He's like, yeah, man. I, it makes it, you know, drier, thinner. I'm like, all right. I, I believe, I, listen, I know it's not scientifically, I believe sound, it too. Right? But I still believe it. I don't give a fuck. I, I believe it too. It's just an element of how fucking well it digests and just moves. It's the digestibility and the low fat content, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, All right, let's take a look at this guy here. 
This is actually from a real documentary? Yes. Yeah, man. Oh, I thought it was a joke. No. He's dead serious. Really? Oh, that's great, then. That, that makes it even better. And there's plenty of... Oh, and that's, it. It for the that's it for the day. <laughs> I should stop shredding the fat. Oh. This Danny definitely won't. reeks like fish. I have seen that before. That's fucking I hope this guy was fucking. He better have been goddamn peeled for that show. Well, looking <laughs> at him, sure. he, 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 listen, I think that diet was because he wasn't getting in shape. Looking yeah. at him, I'm like, I fuck it. I'm giving this kid two rice listen, cakes. And he more. must have been flat my as favorite, a pancake. My, so. my, my favorite part of that clip is he's like, he looking at, think. he's looking he up. Like, think about it. <laughs> That's like, no. He's like, what am I eating? It's like the same thing you eat every fucking meal, bro. Fish and me, or a rice cake. Fish it's staggered. That. Fish and a rice cake. Fish. Fish. It's like it hasn't. It's like it hasn't sunk into it. That it's all fish. <laughs> no, listen, if you eat fish all day with two rice cakes, you're fucking retarded. <laughs> yeah. sure. Like not not like actually retarded, but like that shit makes you stupid when you're eating that little account. Could have explained that it's so just, simply. Just saying, I eat eight meals a day of fish and and right. alternating with fish and one rice cake and four rice cakes. Yeah. I don't think like no. the, 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 like the rice cakes. I think of like had, seven grams of carb rice cakes. I don't he know. Had to, oh, he that's... had to think about it, man. He's like fish. So yeah, he's eating, he's eating like fucking twenty eight grams of carbs a day. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that guy's the fucking that guy's the fucking girl. So anyway, our uh, administrator, <laughs> our our uh, operations guy comes in. He's like, I'm like, what's your diet? He's like, fish, and I get a rice cake, and that just fucking. <laughs> and he <laughs> and he had never seen it. And oh, well, was he like, wasn't being facetious. Yeah, no, well, he was being serious. So uh, it was only like one or two of his meals, but I just couldn't help it. I'm like, because this is fifteen years old, so a lot of young guys yeah. have never seen that. So I had to show it to him. We were classic, fucking, man. Yeah. We were pissing ourselves. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, okay. Let's see. What do we got here? Uh, hacks for meal prep. Best way to cook, store food, and prepare to get meals in. Cook it and put it in the fridge. The end. No. Wow. <laughs> if you really want to cook shit for a long time, cook it, let it cool, vacuum seal it, and Freeze. then throw it in the freezer. And you'll have yeah. a I remember... Uh, I was too lazy, so I had, used to have a chef cook my fish for me. He would literally cook me like two months worth of fish, but vacuum seal Dude, each portion. Did and you I would watch throw it in my freezer? I watched Samson's um, meal prep video on the hostile page the other day. Yeah, and his wife like meal prep like fucking forty pounds of chicken for him, and I know it up and yeah. vacuum seal it all. Yeah, like, damn, dude, she out cooking steaks and scissoring it up, fucking meal prep, all of it for months. But I also of- listen for, with fish. I could do it because the chef guy made the fish actually taste good somehow. But I don't think I could vacuum seal and freeze chicken and eat that chicken for like two months. I don't know. If I feel was, like, if it was you know, know marinated and stuff, you know, it was juicy. Yeah, if it retained it. I mean, when you vacuum no, seal, I don't think Samson's is marinated. It doesn't look like it. No, this is what I'm no. saying, though. I think Samson doesn't give a fuck. He's just he like, doesn't give a fuck. Remember last year when we had him guest pose? Remember he just eating his food like they'd be sitting there all day, just eat it. <laughs> so like, I, t- I told this story before. He was we that's drove the, all that's the, the African thing. He yeah, had, he had his, <laughs> he had Tupperware in a in a <laughs> cooler bag with no ice. Yeah, and he in July a, in July, <laughs> and he ate it at the end of the night. I would do still, that. Too. He was still eating the same meals. <laughs> I would do that. No, oh, fuck no, man. I have the shit. I, I'll like, travel yeah, I the that. whole day with my food in an uncoolered pack and eat it at like fucking midnight when I cooked it like the day before. You know, really? yeah, I've done some pretty sketchy stuff. Yeah, but I, think I, I, got, I got better after I had, you know, that experience blowing up my asshole in the airport. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember that story. Oof. I've yeah. had a couple of food, po- like light food poisoning Dude. episodes, and I can't do it, man. That one was so gnarly. It fucking. Yeah, that, that'll scare you straight. Yeah. Uh,. Would you rather a training session with Dorian Yates, Flex, Levin, Kevin Lavroni, or Ronnie? Dorian. 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 Everybody said Dorian, right? Yeah. Paul? Well, I don't know. He buried Kevin, Lav- Kevin Lavroni. I'd probably go with Kevin Lavroni, yeah. No, he, he, he would kill you now, but let's say when you were like young and healthy. He probably would have buried me back then, too. I, I'd probably, uh, I probably would have liked to train with Kevin Lavroni. Kevin I think Lavroni. he would have more chill with my style. I, I have to pick. I'm picking Dorian. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah, like pick to train with. Over. I wouldn't like to train with Ronnie because it would just be. Yeah. We had to pull. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do respect to the goat. I just don't want to train like that. Yeah. You imagine no, tra- it's not because I don't want to train like that. It's because he's going to have 15 fucking plates on the leg press. Right. Or, yeah. No, <laughs> or, or I don't want to train like that. <laughs> yeah, we're going to oh, do it. Mean, yeah. for fucking eight sets, and you know, it's going to be 110 degrees. And I thought Derek was training with him today. Derek Lunsford. Was training with Ronnie. With really? Ronnie, oh, yeah. I'll tra- I mean, I'll train with Ronnie now. Don't get me wrong; I'll bury that. Like when work- <laughs> I think Ronnie put him through a workout, and they did Ronnie's podcast or something. 
Oh yeah. Uh, Ronnie's got a podcast. Did you watch? Yeah, Ronnie's got a podcast. It's successful too. Yeah, I got to see that. A lot of views. What's it called? Nothing but a peanut. That's so cool, dude. Yeah. That's so cool. What else? Check that out. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I don't know if they're all just him. I think it's him and Giles. I'm not sure, but he has like a host and then he, he's Ronnie. Oh, but, uh, did you watch the training footage? I just saw a clip on his Instagram story. I want to see what he put him through. He's still I saw, him, I saw him just doing wild cable rows, you know? Yeah, oh yeah, dude. Ballistic fucking. Come on. <laughs> fucking... You're such an <laughs> asshole. No, <he's... laughs> hey, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> hey. <laughs> This horrible, stupid argument no. from authority. Derek's back's incredible. Derek and Ronnie have the best backs ever. Yeah, exactly. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can do whatever the fuck they want. I thought you were talking about Ronnie was doing wild. That's what I thought too. No, I don't think Ronnie was training. He was chilling in his chair. Okay. Oh, okay. Chill, yeah. You thought Ronnie was doing crazy rows, eh? Dude, he, I've watched that guy. Would you put it past him? Come on. Recently, yeah, I would put it past he him. Was, he, he's still doing like crazy fucking pull downs where he's just yeah. fucking gripping and ripping. Uh,. What's the furthest you'll drive before paying for a flight? Fuck, I'll drive across the country. I hate flying. Both four six hours. hours. I'd say four, four hours is a good. A good yeah. Four like hours? I would drive to Toronto, but anywhere further than that, if I had the option to fly, if it was like the thing is, it depends. Like uh, most places, there isn't. Like in in Ontario, where am I going to fly? That's you could fly to Windsor. You could fly to Windsor. Yeah. But is that a major airport? Can I fly there? Yes, you could fly there. What is it? Not, it's not an a major airport. It's either an well, airport or it's not. Then I would fly there. Yeah. <laughs> You probably have to transfer in Toronto. Oh, see, yeah, no, then I would drive. I don't think it was direct flights. Yes, yeah, from Ottawa, saying. yeah, from Ottawa. To like, get, like there might port, be, but I don't know. It's like a Porter flight from Ottawa to Windsor, maybe. Porter's good. <laughs> I would. It's eight hours. Who fucking? I almost cares? fucking. Yeah, but that's eight hours both ways, man. That's sixteen hours of driving for something that would be like an hour flight. I mean, I get stuck in Toronto traffic. Yeah, yeah that, Toronto like, traffic. Like fuck that. That's that, Justin. I'm saying I almost drove to the Olympia because that flight that got booked for me was twelve fucking hours. Oh, and so it's like a, oh. it's like a thirteen hour drive. You're like such a fucking whiner. No, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Listen, it was like an eight hour layover and sitting in. Hey, fucking... hostiles a growing company. You got to. Take... <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, it's <laughs> <Sure. listen>, it... <laughs> I didn't realize how that was a disparaging comment against my. <laughs> it wasn't. I don't care. <laughs> but we ended up finding it. We ended up finding. We actually, we actually do it on purpose. We look for the worst flight ever. See that? <laughs> you pin it on me. Yeah. So yeah. Send you a bus ticket next time. I deserve it, dude. <laughs> so uh, like, go to the bigger layover. Yeah, <laughs> it is deep. I should do that to you one time to see what you do. <laughs> um, Just red eye, fucking over overnight. When your lady is not around and you're in the mood, do you bust Lots a jerk off? Do you bust no. in a sock or in a towel? Sock or t- towel? Sock. Who busts in a sock? Yeah, man. Yeah, who wants to some abrasive fucking? Sandpaper socks. Why would why I don't want to you... waste a pair of socks? What do you? This kid, this guy must be like fifteen. Why would you bust in a sock? Yeah. He's probably trying to hide it from someone. Yeah, uh, his parents, for sure. <laughs> Your mom knows, buddy. Your mom fucking. Yeah, knows. everyone. No one touches his boy's socks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think needs to happen for men's physique to be taken seriously? <laughs> Lose the board shorts, or will it ever? And now that classic exists, an aesthetic, but in as, as an aesthetic bodybuilding that somewhat fits between the division um, has plenty of fans. I, yeah. I I don't necessarily like the division, but that's perfectly fine. It's doing well. What mm-hmm. classic? I yeah, think no um, men's, physique. men's physique. I think if we're being serious about it, like let's just take the sport seriously for a second and talk about it. Mm-hmm. I think men's physique needs to go back to being bikini for men. It's because the guys, big. the guys are so fucking big. Too fucking big, yeah. Yeah. It's like that's not. But what the but this is, is the thing. On. But if you're judging it, Fuad, if you got a guy with a waist like this, and you know he's this yeah. much bigger, or the same guy with the same structure but much smaller, it's just nature. You're gonna go with the guy with the the same shape. No, but no, bigger. but that's what that's but that's what I'm saying. Like, remember back in the day, we used to. So we have men's physique at our show. Yeah. Uh, by the way, our show is uh, May thirteenth. Registrations open at ibadchampionships.com. Ian's guest posing. Ian's guest posing. Ian's guest posing. And there might be a surprise guest poser as well. Oh, uh, well, I wonder, wonder awesome. who that might be. Make sure he's the best bodybuilder. <laughs> Rami, oh, Rami, don't worry. Rami's he is. coming. Rami's coming. <laughs> just, just don't bring Samson, okay? I'm bringing <laughs> Andrew. I'm bringing Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> no, Paul's gonna. Paul's getting in shape right now. Okay, great. I'm, good. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm growing into it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Paul. Fuad, Fuad's trying to convince me to come to guest post. Um, 
I'm not trying to convince you. I'm not begging. I said, do you yeah. want a guest post? That was it. That's all I said. You know he said? He yeah. that. Hey, how much do you think he offered to pay me, Ian? Oh, fuck you. I, you're lucky. <laughs> Ask Ian when he got paid the first time he came. I just want I, I just want Ian to answer. Ian, that. what did you get paid the first time you guest spoke for me? A thousand bucks. No, you didn't. It was five hundred. Five hundred, maybe. Yeah, five hundred. So yeah. there you go, Justin. This is what I mean. You're friends with a <laughs> bunch then of. Gave, and then and then you and then you gave me a hundred bucks for like gas and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's only fair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but this Watch is the problem. Coffee. This is the problem with you being friends with so many top pros. Is you think. <laughs> You deserve what they have, and they've fucking paid for it already. Hey, you—you you know they say you are the company you keep. You know? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I gotta Don't start doing fucking Bumstead more and charging fucking thirty thousand. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I know, right? What's going on, guys? Today's podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, and if you go to manscaped.com forward slash rbp, you can get twenty percent off and free shipping on their new beard kit that I'm going to show you. Check this out. So you get all this cool stuff in the beard kit. I'm going to show you each piece one by one. First of all, the most important part is you get the beard trimmer itself. Now, the cool thing is you don't get a ton of these attachments like with every other beard trimmer. And you lose half of them. This one, you can set the beard trimmer length with this dial. So you just have the one guard to worry about, which is beautiful because I always lose these. So that's the first thing. Second thing is you get the beard conditioner. You get beard balm. You get a beard brush. Wonderful. Um, and you get... Let's see, beard oil. And the last thing is the beard shampoo. So you get all this. I'm going to show you on the website. If you go to the website, manscaped.com forward slash RBP, you can get go to new, new beard kit. Click on that. It'll show you exactly what you get. You get the scissors. You get the brush. You get all this stuff in the beard kit for $139, but you save 20% plus you get free shipping. So make sure you go to manscaped.com forward slash rbp or use code rbp at checkout to get the discount plus the free shipping guys you won't regret it this beard trimmer with the dial on here so you don't have all the attachments is absolutely wonderful um yeah, I'm just fine. anyway what the fuck are we talking about why did i bring that up oh, oh man Men's Men's physique. Physique. yeah 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 anyway i was gonna say so we had that class at our at our show we were the uh, first I, ones in Canada food. Yeah, remember? this was like this was like, but I remember it was after it was introduced, and I remember yeah. guys guys coming out, and they actually penalized them for being too big, and they picked Saba to win. Yeah, uh, I one of that, our yeah. friends, and, and Saba yeah. had a really this kid had a really nice physique, but he was smaller, yeah. Yeah. and he wasn't like he wasn't like super hard or nothing. And I think why they can do the criteria for bikini, they tell the girls, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, big, you're right, don't get too they gotta, they gotta um, change the criteria then, yeah, because yeah, like, right now, because it feels like men's physique is basically classic with shorts on, for sure. They're the same yeah, size. I've seen, I've seen like bigger. legit, legit there's no figure weight limit. girls in it, legit figure girls in a bikini division that get penalized that look way better, right? And harder, right? But it's just not the division. Yeah. I just think yeah. there should I agree be, with you, I, agree I just with think there be, should be more separation between classes. You have like the beach body guy, the classic guy, and then the open men's yeah. guy. Hey, Fu, I remember oh, the first I year we had the it, same, but I think if you also took Aaron Banks and made him hit a pose, he wouldn't like look. Like or made C bum hit a classic physique pose, he would look terrible. You know, I, I, I agree. Physique pose. So like, look, I, I, I'm all for these men's physique guys being fucking huge. I think they look sick. I think Aaron Banks look fucking dope. And these guys, I be bigger, make them all bigger, ripped, fucking awesome. But I, but look to that point though, if you took more Aaron steroids Banks, for everybody, if <laughs> if you took Aaron Banks and shrank him, he would still win. Like yeah, the, but the, the structure then it is goes still there. Back to Paul's point, that's like when you have two guys next to each other and you have Aaron Banks, but Aaron Banks, who's a little bigger, so his sheep is accentuated even more. It's hard to pick yeah. the bad one, you know? I don't, I, don't have an, I don't have an issue with them being big. I have an issue with them having small legs and wearing board shorts. That's, <laughs> what, I don't, that's what I don't like. That's the thing. Them. Some of those guys have big legs. I'm like, yeah, I know. Some of them are <laughs> classic. They just can't make weight for classic. Okay, okay I got a better idea. Wait, I got wait, a better... Bikini, it's different because I think the biggest discrepancy, obviously muscularity, but is conditioning. Right, right. that's what I was going to say. They're getting just as peeled as everybody else. Like all the men's classes, we all get as lean yeah. as we can. Yeah, where right, yeah. in women's division it's a ramping scale more of conditioning as well right. as muscularity. because like you said and like, like conditioning here and then muscularity you know that's a good point yeah because like a bikini like you still have to have the structure like a small waist whatever yes. developed hamstrings and glutes yes. and whatnot but not overly developed to the point of a figure girl and not yeah, conditioned well, to the, yeah. and and when they when they describe conditioning it's like not show not show vascularity um, like striations subtle, or, yeah. subtle yeah subtle separations no striations but yeah. Yeah. yeah you could put that same kind of criteria in men's okay physique, well maybe probably... well, what if they did this what if you took 
see, so you could do that, but let's say Ian's right and you want some big anyway. What if you just took the men's physique guide and said you still wear shorts, but the short shorts so we can see your legs? So you can see but just like classic your classic teardrops. That's not the point of the class, though, because then you're just getting a classic. I think at that point it think, should just what, be. What was the original question? It was how can men's physique be taken seriously? Will men's physique, will men's physique ever be taken seriously now that classic? I mean, I, d- I don't think that it's not taken seriously. Yeah, I was gonna oh, say, yeah. No, it's taken seriously. Well, those guys are serious, man. Like, yeah. And I, I, I think there's still. A, a pretty big variance between the looks of the guys, even though the muscularity might be not that difference in the upper bodies. I think it doesn't like how you look with your arms down versus the guy posing with his arms up. Your one physique could be amazing looking in one and terrible. Oh, looking look, in the other. I you know, like you, you take, you take yeah. a guy like Jeremy Buendia with this crazy shape and make him hit a front double. Even if he had monster legs, he's not going to look that good to me. You know, I can tell or you, you put Chris with his arms down. He looks like garbage. You know, <laughs> the guy that's the guy that took, I don't know his name. I apologize. But the guy, I think he took fifth at the Arnold. I remember specifically saying to Dennis, that guy looks like a bodybuilder. Yes. So you're right. So certain guys doesn't matter. Stand out. Yeah. Yeah. They they look too thick, even though yeah, they're, they're all yeah. big. Even, even if the muscularity is on par, muscularity isn't all the same. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah, you might yeah. be as heavily muscled, but physiques are built differently. There's a lot more emphasis on abdominal development in these guys. A lot yeah. more shoulder arm back development. Like it's just a very different look. And I think if you got those guys to hit poses, they wouldn't look that great. And I think if you got Classic physique guys to hit men's physique poses, they wouldn't look that great either. Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder, I wonder if you did eliminate the class, like what, how many of those guys would ha- still have a place to go in the industry? Not, not much. Not many. Um, like, yeah. Like, I mean, think, think of taking a guy like Ramon and put him in board shorts game to post. He would look brutal, you know? Yeah. yeah no right. shit. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Even the conditioning is a different look. Yeah. Like you're saying, must be a different look. I think it would different. I think it look bad. I think you could put Ramon or Urs in a pair of shorts so. and they would do, I don't think, I'm not saying they would beat Aaron Banks, but. I don't think they would be out of place. I think Urz looks good when he fucking comes up and yeah. opens up the lats and it's yeah. so Listen, don't get like don't lats, get me wrong. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying either guy's in the wrong class. Because like Urz, Urz has abs like me that aren't like super deep separated abs. And I think to be good at men's physique, you need just fucking like the craziest abs, you know? Yeah, great detail. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. As far as the respect for the class goes, I think uh I think a lot of guys that don't respect the class don't watch it. Because yeah. I'll tell you for myself personally, once I started commentating the Arnolds and I actually had to like watch the physiques last year and this year, I was like, holy fuck, these guys are actually really, really good. They got crazy. So you, you actually, like if you look at Aaron Banks back, it's fucking retarded. It's crazy. Yeah. So it's like you earn, you, you, uh, develop a lot more respect for them after you I mean look if I'm if I'm picking watch. a style of physique to have for like my day-to-day life I'm picking one of those guys yeah, 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 yeah. yeah right Listen, yeah. if I'm when walking I... around the beach looking like Aaron Banks you know how much pussy you're getting compared to looking like fucking Ronnie Coleman <laughs> right, it, yeah. you know that guy can that guy can still like run around and like fucking throw yeah. a football and play fucking yeah. volleyball on the beach and get pussy and like we are yeah. I mean, you're right you're right Justin I think you should go back stop getting big <laughs> Yeah, player. I think so. I think I might dial it back and yeah. just you, you know. have the shape, you have the, you have the shape for it. It was small. Yeah, this is the thing. Yeah. Justin's got that long waist, those high lat insertions yeah. that look good when he pulls up. I don't know yeah. if he sits down and like it would look the same. No, know? I can't. Yeah, I can't really sit down. I yeah, I don't yeah. think so. Maybe well, just put some shorts on. Maybe just go to classic. Maybe just go to classic. And would would my big huge calves be distracting coming out of the bottom of the? Yeah, that would look I, I would rather see that at a men's physique guy. Well, I, you I don't see like... that typically. What you see, is I don't like, like it. I think it looks bad. Really, I I, I feel like they should be developed because we're that's looking at them. A, they should that's be. Judged. You're a body, but that's because you're. A body I know. Build. It's just I like know, most these guys are like calves. these kind of longer, leaner black dudes that have like great flow. And then you come down, they're a little. Yeah, they shouldn't be in nothing physique, there. I think you should look like an upside down, like a Dorito, you know? Like you should be like, <laughs> like yeah. <you> know? <laughs> Doritos. See, we're back to the yeah. language. Good shit. Uh, Came full circle. Paul, Paul, and do honestly, a, do, you no, think big, do you think it's a big deal to eat a uh, normal size bag? Family size. Well, family size, you know, the big size of Dorito. Like, do you think it's a family, family size? size? Yeah. Big, big deal to eat that? To eat one full bag and yeah. like in a sitting? Yeah. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like while you're watching, Two, a mo- like while you're watching a movie, a family like, size. Are you sharing it? Are you sharing it with your wife? No, no, no. no. It's, it's a, it's a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> a bit indulgent. Can you I know, tell you? Yeah. Can I tell you guys what the funniest? But I know you eat more than that, though. Can I tell but you yeah, funniest? yeah. No, he did eat more than that. There was, also, there was a box of Rice Krispie treats. Don't fucking say there wasn't. We had these. You were eating meat. those too. Fuck, of course I did. I just didn't eat them at the extent that you ate them. Oh, I think you did. <laughs> 
We were sharing. No, no, I did not. You dude. ate all the strawberry Listen, ones. Listen, you, well, he is laying down on the couch, like on his side, just doing this. <laughs> and then at the end of the movie, I look over and there's all these wrappers just right here. And like all, all these crumbs from Doritos. He gets a little bit of fucking crime scene. It's just like, <laughs> you're sick. <laughs> crime scene. He's, he's, sick. Guy, he's an illness. Actor. And he's just like, oh, he's gonna read that. <laughs> Where was this at? And, and he's like, Can I tell you what the funniest part of DoorDash, DoorDash Denny's again? <laughs> you ordered more than I did, you fucking asshole. Did I? At yes. Denny's? You're like, I want hash browns. I want eggs. Yeah, he's an active <laughs> bodybuilder, bro. He's got to grow. You're I, was, I, had to get I was trying to bulk up. We ordered, the same, we ordered the same exact order. Yeah. I'm still too, I'm heavier than you. Yeah, but you, I'm saying you, you said I ordered more than you. I didn't. We ordered the same food. We ordered the same thing. You're right. I agree. Yeah. Was, um, I have a big appetite. Listen, the, the funniest part of that whole interaction was Paul knew that it was me who ate way too much, and he was trying to be diplomatic. It's not that bad. You know, you know, for that, it's not that I know bad. some people that can do that. <laughs> he's, trying to, he's trying to protect his friend. I'm like, nah. <laughs> Preserve so you, your image. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't. Oh, this is okay. I like that part of my image. I'm a, I love to eat. So you're, you're you, you, uh, Paul, you would never eat a large bag of Doritos. I will. I it's it's rare, but I have. Okay. Yeah, for me, it's a regular thing. Because you know what it is. If it was, if it's um, if it's more like I'm more of a sweets than oh, salty kind it's of cookies. Guy. Yeah, you eat a ton oh, of cookies. Though. I'll kill cookies. I'll okay, eat a so couple Paul, boxes. It's okay, wait a minute. So Paul is the same as me, but with cookies. Yeah. You guys all got your vice. Yeah. Yep. Okay, let me ask you this: If you go to watch a movie and you get popcorn, do you get like the extra large bag of popcorn? Uh, popcorn is my thing. I'm, you know asking, what I I'm asking Justin. Oh, sorry. I'm, a, I'm like a medium popcorn kind of guy. But if I get like um, the movie theaters have those, my movie theater has like those nerds clusters, like the gummy nerds cluster. You guys had those? Oh, yeah. those are good. Yep. Those are amazing. I will fucking rip through a whole bag of those. You have, when I'm good. getting food cravings, you know what I do? Uh, don't eat. Smoke cigarettes. No. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, they're a useful <laughs> tool, bodybuilders. You're a, you're a, you're a closet anor anorexic is what you are. I've, you know I've what? started actually putting these in my clients' programs when they're like, hey, I'm, my hunger is <laughs> open. I'm like, fun. okay, meal one, meal two. Okay, between meal two and three, have three cigarettes. Two cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> appetite, one ephedrine, two cigarettes. You know? Yeah. But yeah. back in the day, a lot of European bodybuilders would do that, thinking that oh, it would. Man, when you go fat. to European Listen. shows too, now you all those guys still smoke. They all do. Like when I was yeah. over in Portugal or Spain – I don't want to throw names out in case they don't like it, but yeah. all these European guys still fucking hack darts like crazy. Yeah. I remember reading, remember Gunnar Rosbo from back in the Arnold day? No. Well, the name's he familiar. was like a German bodybuilder. The Gunner Gunner sounds Ros familiar, but I don't remember seeing, I don't remember the face. Yeah. He was like, you know, not like a, I don't know if he ever won any shows, but he was back in Arnold day. Anyways, I remember because my dad used to get all the muscle fitness magazines. I would read them all. I remember him talking about it there on, when he started dieting, he was, he was start smoking. Well, yeah. listen, Okay, wait. I just want to clarify. Oh, Nick, I'm joking. Also, Nick, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, like I'm not saying it's good gum, like uh, like Nicorette, like Nicorette. Yeah, a lot of guys do that too. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, it kills your appetite. There's no two yeah. ways about it. So when you're fucking yeah. down at like 2,000 calories or 1,500 well, calories, you're starving. A lot of people also use Adderall. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. For speed. Just, this this past Olympia, what I was doing because like the last two weeks I was actually really fucking hungry is I was just dipping like a madman. Mm. Your I'll just I end up drinking coffee like a motherfucker. Yeah. Coffee's a yeah. big one for me too. Yeah. You put in a big yeah. chew and then you just sit there and fucking spit in there, you'll never think about eating, you know? They're, they're all they're, they're all <laughs> oh, you'll be so sick process. to your stomach, you won't even want. Hey, food. do you guys anybody do you guys know anybody who's taking that uh Ozempic shit? I do. Oh my god, this is all I, know, people. Right now, right? I, I just heard about it because my doctor was like, Hey, I know you got a big appetite. You suggested maybe. it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fool, yeah. you're not at that stage. That, that's you no, know. I didn't say I'm a fat sow. I'm just saying, like, maybe he, he, he said that he's for a Canadian doctor, doctor to recommend you got to be pretty fat, bro. No, no, no. Was it? Well, I think they're really like, pushing wait, it hard it, right now. Was yeah. it you that said it? Me? No, it was your physician. Who I know a couple it, guys. It wasn't, guys doctor, it wasn't my doctor. It was, <laughs> okay. it was somebody, it was somebody's opinion I respect, but it wasn't my doctor. I can't remember who well, suggested it. It's very popular right now. I mean, it's similar yeah. like a performance, isn't it? Like, it, it kills your appetite. Um, I know a guy. I know a guy who's like he's a big dude, um, and like out of control appetite, um, cannot lose weight for the life of him. And you know, I mean, he's he's a lazy guy too. He like he has never exercised his whole life or anything. Has a hard time getting started. But he finally his doctor finally put him on it. He's dropped sixty pounds in the last yeah, six months. This is the problem I have with that. I don't want to just not eat. I'm, I'd I know, rather I'd, yeah. I'd rather do I'd rather do what I've been doing the last week is just eat better. Because here's the thing: like, what's your long term plan? Like, you gotta are you gonna stay on the drug for life? Well, that's, that's not the, the case. But, but that's not the problem I worry about. I worry about if I took that, 
okay, great. I'm not going to eat, but that means I'm losing weight. I'm not just losing fat. I'm losing muscle too. Yeah. Yeah. And then, right, and then, sure. and then what's my, what's my training like going to be like, you've seen my training's gotten way better this week. Yeah. Cause I've been eating regular meals and they're clean. Right. So versus when, I, versus when I was eating you, two meals. Dude, you, know. you can get into shape, you know? No, exactly. no, no, no. I know. I know. Yeah. I'm, in shape. I'm just, I just, the average person, a yeah, lot of people yeah. are just seeking for answers and have no fucking idea. No, no, no. But I'm, you just, know, I'm just having the conversation because I'm sure yeah. other body bodybuilders have heard about it. So is this you, is this has to be prescribed? Is this not? Yeah, okay? I think you can get in the black market now too, though. Yeah, um, but but my point being is that I don't know. Maybe if you took less, it'd be okay. But I think like as a bodybuilder, why would you want to kill your appetite? Well, yeah, you wouldn't. I I, I would think it's more for like maybe women who maybe yeah. get out of control in the off season or why something. Being, you know, why being sexist? Well, I mean, you're still, be, you're still muted. No, no, no. Um, but like, I, I can see it being used as an intervention, you know, to to get someone on the right track to exercising, eating better, you know. That's not but my point. That, long that's term, not my, that's not my point. My only point is, if you're a bodybuilder and you can't eat, you're fucked. So, yeah. are bodybuilders doing this? But in a comp in a contest prep setting, it makes sense. Like, if you're hungry during a contest prep, why? It depends. Why? It depends how much. It depends how much is killing your appetite. Yeah, right. Because I remember I was in a con. I don't think that's the only. That's not like what the only mechanism that it is to make you lose weight. It's not like no. it's just an appetite suppressant. But that it seems to be to do with blood glucose and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, oh, but okay. I and I think it's related to your appetite. Sure. Um, you know, whatever your appetite hormone is must get affected by yeah, this process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because I was thinking, like, I stopped taking Anadrol for that exact reason. Yeah. Because you can't I, was, eat. I was taking Anadrol in a contest prep at the very beginning, like when I was 14 weeks out or something like that. Yeah, but you're still eating enough food there at that point. But like if you're three weeks out, it might maybe be I wouldn't care. I would but take I'm taking Anadrol right. just so I wasn't hungry. Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> yeah. Justin, I'm telling you, it fucked me up so bad. I was only taking yeah. one. Destroyed your appetite. I could yep. for, I was having like one meal a day and I didn't even want to eat that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I saw so I just cut it out. That is some good Anadrol, dude. That's the good shit. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. When I first when I first started metformin, I had a hard time eating. But uh, but it went away within a week or two. Yeah, but see, metformin, I think metformin and Olympic are like very similar mechanisms of action, aren't they? Like, Is it? I'm not sure. I've never really looked I, into I'm, that. I, I, think just... they're, I think they're not the same, but they're similarities for sure. Very much. Yeah. Similar. Is Brandon Curry still top six? Well, he came fourth at this past Olympia, so yeah. I know, but I mean, like, are we expecting him to be in the top six next year, or is he? Is his time coming due? I don't believe he will be, but I I love you, Brandon. Sorry. So what? It would just be. I think you'll have. I think you'll have. Were uh, Samson, Andrew, or I think if Samson, Samson, and Andrew move ahead of him. I personally believe if Brandon is the same as he looked this year, but more a little bit harder, he's still in the top six. I think so too. He was fucking big and full. I think he could be. I think he'll be in the top six, being sixth. Maybe yeah, I think he's maybe, on the maybe he'll start to yeah maybe yeah, fifth fifth or sixth but I think yeah. I can see guys like Andrew and Samson pass him Nick and those guys and, 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 and Derek I think are past him you know yep. okay. Okay. So those Hi- are the five I can hypothetical hypothetical if Brandon was, the wild card. if Brandon was as full as he was but a little bit harder would he have been third second or first I think he would have been in the same place I don't think so yeah, I don't think he would have been too. fourth I don't think he could yeah yeah okay. I think that was a, as good as yeah. Who has the best genetics in bodybuilding? Paul Dillette, Ronnie Coleman, Flex Wheeler, etc. And then let Lee Priest comment. Oh, I was gonna say Lee Pri- Lee Priest. Yeah, Lee Priest is here. <laughs> what did he Lee, say? Lee Pri- Priest got see me at thirteen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, no, he was a. Did you, did you see him as a teenager though? Well, he remember, remember he, he remember, win pro shows. Remember he won his yeah. pro card at like seventeen. They wouldn't give it to him. Yeah. Yeah. They gave him his pro card at the Amateur Niagara Falls show. I know, many, like, many, he, like ran 100 he, milligrams of DECA and put on 40 pounds of muscle. No, but like <laughs> what I'm saying is he actually earned his pro card before that, but they didn't yes. give it to him oh. too young. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, know, Lee Priest is crazy genetics. Incredible. And I think if you talk to like, if you hear like Jay Cutler or these guys get to yeah. ask that question, I think they all throw out Lee Priest as the answer. They all yeah. Say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember how big he would get in the offseason? He would yeah. get sloppy. He, he was slow. my he was my favorite. He was my because anybody anytime somebody said, "Oh, you get too fat," I'd be like, "Look at Lee." Yeah, like, and, and then he would get the bucket of cans. Just by the eat whatever the fuck I feel like, and then just do three hours of cardio and get rid of it. No big deal. He would, and then in twelve he weeks, still he does that. Cardio. He still eats fuck. Does three hours. Dude, of cardio. he sent me yeah. a message. He sent me a message the other day. He was doing cardio at four in the morning. Yeah, really? yeah. Because well, we wait, did, was it four in the morning for you? He's in Australia. No, no, no. It was four in the morning for him. So we did that video where we were like, "Why do you got to get up at four a.m.?" Blah blah blah. Yeah. He messed me. He sent me a DM, and he's like, "It's three forty-five here. I'm doing cardio." I'm like, what that normal f- for him? It, 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 yeah, he does cardio all day long. 
Well, do you he'll, see the guy? He looks he'll go, listen, he'll go. When I was doing the circle stuff with him, he would be on the circles walking to go get ice cream. He loves he loves to eat. He lo- he loves to eat. He loves I to wish I wish I enjoyed cardio to that degree. You know, you think he's, just, <laughs> you think he's like cranking T three and fucking. No, I think he's just honestly every time he's, we'd all live a lot longer. When he that, when he was yeah. on the when he was on the circles at least three times a day he was doing fucking an, like a cardio of some sort, like low intensity cardio, like walking whatever. And he literally is like, yeah, I do this so I can eat more. And then you'd see him like after he was done walking, he'd be at home smashing chocolate bars. But... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that guy's got something right. He still has like 22 inch arms. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Insane. Uh, if female bodybuilders on gear aren't considered men, then why are trans people? Uh, sorry, guys. Bad question. Because uh, yeah. uh, they identify as such. Uh, <laughs> who in the podcast would have been the best men's physique athlete? Justin. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Uh, why does Guy Cicerino have a professional setup for his podcast and not yours? Because he's hosting that one, so he has to do it right. Differentiate. Uh, now that we are past the Olympia and Arnold, who is... Oh, no, we read that one before. In uh, that one and that one. Let's see. Jeez, these are all repeats. Who knows the most Spanish and meaning of the words they know? Who knows the most Spanish? Anybody? Probably Jose. Jose's Spanish, right? I don't know. Yeah. I would assume. I feel like Guy would speak Spanish for some stupid reason, yeah. No. <laughs> or he'll tell you that he can. Yeah, he would tell you. He'd be like, I <laughs> yeah. can... anybody. I a Spanish girl, you know? <laughs> Look, at this. Is, these are the questions I find hilarious. What advice would you give Flex Wheeler when he was 25 if you knew the future, how everything turned out? What? None. I would give no advice to Flex Wheeler. He literally just got a Lifetime Achievement Award at the fucking yeah, Arnold. He like, seems everything. to have done okay. Everything he seems to have done has worked out for him. I know... Yeah. Obviously, he's lost a leg, but he's had a great life. Dude's doing fine. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, do you think if Samson didn't get to stand next to Rami at the O, he would be... Oh, we already answered that one, I think, a while back. Hmm. Let's see. Would you rather tell the truth and nobody believe you or lie and everyone believes you all the time? Lying. 100%. Lying. Yeah. yeah, lying, for sure. You know, well, fucking well, frustrating that'd be. But I mean, if you can lie and everyone believes everything you say, that's pretty fucking valuable. That's too. a super. That's a superpower. Yeah, that's yeah. a superpower. I could just at the say bank. You'd be like, you just believe it. You know, walk in the bank like I work here. <laughs> yeah. I own and have thirty million dollars in my account. I'd like to withdraw, please. <laughs> yeah, because you don't. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> best goat of all goats: Wayne Gretzky, Jim Brown, Muhammad Ali, Ronnie Coleman. So, who's the goat of goats? There's Michael Jordan. There's Wayne, Gret- Wayne Gretzky. Probably MJ, yeah. There's Let's like, just also Tom, say Tom like Brady. A- Tom Brady. Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. I'd say Gretzky. Yo, Michael, well, Michael Schumacher. Listen, Michael Gretzky Schumacher. can play Gretzky can play hockey. Fucking Michael Jordan played motherfucking everything. He was yeah. crap at baseball, though. He wasn't very good at baseball. Oh, yeah. He was still oh, a goddamn hey. pro. They they still put him, in, that's because he was league. Michael Jordan. He wait, was still wait, NFL, wait, who's the NFL player? Who's the NFL player that's Bo Jackson? Yeah, he Bo was Jackson. the greatest potentially yeah, ever, yeah. but his career guy was ended too short. Yeah, but when you hear people talk about him, they talk about him like he's a mythical. I fucking... wouldn't. I wouldn't say that was the greatest athlete because ever. Because you have to attach wild accomplishment list to yeah. go. But look at look that's at why what, I said Gretzky. Look at what Michael Jack or Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. <laughs> nah, he's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> what Michael Jordan has done from like a monetization standpoint of his yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. What Empire, about, okay, like, wait. We have to like narrow it down. Are we talking about overall? No, we're just talking about go oh. everything. Like accomplishments in his sport. Well, there's no way. There's nobody that can beat Michael Jordan because he's got. Well, well Gretzky. Who, who's going to touch Gretzky's records? That's not. No, but we're, we're talking, talking about everything. everything. You're so Canadian. We're talking about everything. Like, what, what do you mean, like have? championships? Like, everything you're talking about? We're talking no, about like, biz- like business. Oh, oh, business. I thought you meant just accomplishments in a sport. Okay. No, we're talking about business. Okay. We're talking about lifestyle, like everything. Okay. Especially right now with like the fucking sneakerhead craze. Like, think of how yeah. much money What a crazy resurgence for that. Could you? Imagine. Shit, wow. this guy's just collecting checks, man. Okay, what about what about what about his uh what about son? so what about social credit? Like are you talking about Muhammad Ali? Like has anybody ever topped that like social ladder no. of being like so important like to like civil rights and like yeah the whole thing because yeah, no, you can make that for sure. I mean it's yeah. there's obviously different have different people and what they value, you're gonna have different answers to this, you know. Yeah, because think... we're we're talking business. If you talk business, nobody beats Michael Jordan. No. Yeah. But if you talk like what what somebody has done for society, Ali. Muhammad, Muhammad Ali played a part. He's probably more iconic. Huh. 
Interesting. It's going to be a very fun. generational answer too. I mean, you ask people that watched Ali fight in his prime, they're all going to say Ali, you know? Yeah. 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 Because yeah, you ask people now about Michael Jordan, they'd be like, you mean the crying meme guy? <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> uh, you can add one body part from Ronnie Coleman on your physique. Where would you place at the 22 Olympia? Give me, give me them glutes. If I had Ronnie Coleman's arms, that's I'd, a good one. I place a lot higher. Because, oh. sorry, that's what's like, the question? Because that's like that's like you can take one that's piece a, of Ronnie's body. Look, that's he, like I put try, it on myself. I would yeah. turn into Nick. Nick's like that. Nick has Ronnie Coleman arms, and not yeah. Ronnie Coleman body. Yeah. So it's like if you took Ronnie Coleman's arms and put them on me, I'd be like Nick. Oh. I don't know, but I, I would <laughs> I'm not. not I'm not saying I'd be that yeah. good. I'm just saying, like, that's the discrepancy. The style, right? physique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Though. <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like I, I'm, I'm hard. Pre- Back seems like the obvious answer, but, but I, that, would, right. that would make Quads. you look worse. That would make you look worse, though. Listen, do you know? Do you know what? Like, let's just say we put Ronnie Coleman's back on us, and then we hit a rear double. You know what our arms and shoulders would look like next. That's, yeah, that's what true. I'm saying. Yeah. That's what so I, I think. I think so quads, quads is a good answer because, like, with giant legs, you always look better. You know? Ronnie, no, Ronnie's not really. Quads look are at, huge. Look yes. No, wait a minute, Eric Fankhauser. Yeah, but that's because he didn't have enough upper body, not because his legs were too big. Yeah, but now know? look at Rolly Winkler. What about him? It's all arms. Yeah, but he still had fucking huge back, huge chest, good legs, good shoulders. Like, you know, they weren't as good as his arms, but he was still like a, I mean, the guys come like fucking second at the Olympia, you know? Yeah. I think, I think Rolly's arms and shoulders are hands down above the rest. I, mm-hmm. I agree, but I think the rest yeah. of them is still it's at still a much good. higher level yeah. than Eric Fankhauser's mm-hmm. upper body was. You yes. know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course. And that's why he was still able to have success. Yeah. Do you think legs, Paul? Ronnie Coleman's legs would look whole. Yeah, his quads. I think his legs, quads, yeah. Yeah, I love those. You would love those right now, retired. Oh, <laughs> well, no, I would around your your nipple ring and those legs. Like, I don't have any more. Uh, but yeah, I would. I would. I, if I had, because just I'd like wearing shorts, you got quads that big, be fucking crazy. I wear oh, shorts everywhere I went. I'd rather have massive arms. You throw a tank top on, you're fucking twenty fours. Yeah, I'd rather have the legs on my on my fucking maybe Harley. Still, massive arms, you know. Maybe it's because I'm still competing and my arms aren't like that bad, so I I don't. But. I think post competing, you do want arms. Yeah, your legs are way better than your fucking arms. You should want I the arms. Know. You gotta oh, take. It, you gotta take the back. I mean, that's like. Yeah, but like oh, I, I you're right about the... you're right about the back. If you had a massive back onto your little hamstrings and your little but arms, my leg, my leg, you just said my legs are better than my arms. Are you I'm talking like, to my shitty hands. My shitty hands. See, but I don't know how much adding a big set of arms, like it would add to my physique, but I don't know how much it would add to my physique. I think a physique always looks better when it's bigger from the outside in. I rather, agree. Rather so from legs, the inside legs, are, legs are from the outside in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I would yeah. say legs, legs or arms. That's what yeah. it have to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got to agree. I'd rather that. have a small torso and big limbs than a huge. If torso I could add one thing limbs. to yeah. my physique, if I had to pick one thing, though, I'm taking like someone with crazy abs as abs. Small waist and abs, though. You yeah, mean, like yeah. and fucking deep, like crazy deep abs, you know, like, um, like yeah. Ahmed Hyder. Yeah, yeah, Hyder, yeah. like Hyder's yeah. arms. Yeah. You don't even know what we're talking about, do you, Justin? No, I don't actually. But those are fucking sick abs, and like, imagine yeah. what that would do for your physique. Just that dead center piece that connects it all. Fuck, who actually has fucking great abs is Brett. <clears throat> yeah, Brett has good abs. <laughs> Brett has good Andrew, abs. Andrew Jack has got some great abs yeah, too. Of course, Andrew yeah. Jack's abs are the best. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I mean, I think of just taking any of our physiques. Like, I take my physique and just put Andrew's midsection. How much that would make it better, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. Like, if you're adding one piece, that makes it so much more keep than everything it. else. And yeah. then you just keep it black, so you just have like these black abs. Go down. No, go down one. <laughs> oh, there. Yeah, like look at those fucking things. Ahmed yeah. Hyder was known as the ab guy. Abzilla. Yeah. Look at these right oh, here. Yeah, those are very good. Look at this. Yeah. Wow. That's fucking so sick, man. Yeah, like, he, yeah. he was probably the guy that like, didn't really train his abs. Like, think of how much that would yeah. add to your physique, man. That would be so sick to have. Yeah. Did somebody say keep them black? <laughs> yeah, they said that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking idiot. <laughs> Justin, was that you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like more, de- was, like, more detail visible. <laughs> <laughs> idiot. I'd look like a fucking car that had like had replacement parts, but had paint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Prim- primer like, hood, like a mixed yeah, like, like, hood. Like fucking a big patch yeah. of bondo on my bumper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question: Is pegging gay? No, no. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, if your God. wife is pegging, <laughs> if your wife is pegging you, it can't be gay. It's not gay. I think it might be. 
I think it might be two. If you like something in your book, <laughs> said it was such a. I think it might be two. <laughs> well, I'm trying to just. I'm trying to think up through here. He's trying to be I, sensitive. He's trying to be sensitive sense. about it. So he says, his, he sense just sense. brings his voice like, down take, a bit. Because you're taking a shaft in your butt <laughs> from, a, from a woman. Yes, see, that's but, from a woman. A minute, but the first thing, the first thing you said was wrong, Paul. You said if you like things in your butt, that's a problem. That's, well. That's not the truth. That's not truth. But if you're taking a massive dildo in your butt, yeah, that's different. the difference. Yeah. That's where I. That's where I'm struggling. Yeah, like it's if it's and if it's especially dirty. if she's got it like tied up in a belt, and well, then like, for sure, then you got oh, yeah, dude, for like sure, legs yeah. pinned back, and she's been, yeah, because then you're like, a bitch too. <laughs> but wait, you you have to you have to think of it in its roots. Like, are you enjoying it because it's your wife doing it, and she might be enjoying it, or it feels good, or are you enjoying it because you're thinking about a man's penis going in your butthole? Fair. I can't see it feeling good no matter what my my the answer. That's not that's the not answer. The answer. That's not the answer whether you think it feels good or not. But the I would answer, think that I'm gay. Answer, but I I don't think it would feel good either, but I don't I that doesn't mean it's The you answer know. is but, if you, hey, wait a minute. The answer is the, the the answer has to do with this. If your wife is getting off on it, yeah. Is that what's getting you off or you just enjoy the sensation so much that it's getting you? But wait. Off? This is the, what I would think. The sensation itself doesn't mean it's gay. It's the thought of who would be caught? Like, if you're yes. fantasizing a man fucking you in the ass, and that's what you're like feeling, then yes. Right. But if you're just enjoying the sensation of your prostate getting fucking hammered, then I mean, sure, you know. Well, this is what I think. Like, yeah. you're getting pounded. Justin, Justin's like by a woman. <laughs> by a yeah. woman. Right. Like, yeah, I have done but, it. But, but a woman no, I never done it. I never done it. I, you know, hey, maybe. So if, so if Margot Robbie but, fucks you with a strap on, you're gay. Bring it on, baby. That's what I'm saying. I, in my head, I'd be thinking I was. Wait a minute. Yeah, That's a I good one. So. Paul, I, Paul, Paul. You're, you're a Rihanna. So old you're, 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 you're a Rihanna fan, right? I'm a Rihanna fan, yeah. Rihanna but comes she's, to you. Rihanna he, comes he, to you. She's, got, she's got a dildo. It's not pre, humongous. Wait. Pre-pregnancy. Yes. You, you, can see, you can see her being a little freaky and wanting to do that for sure. It's like it's like a six-inch yeah. dildo. It's not super thick. And she's like, I want to bend you over and fuck you. And it's not phallically like it doesn't look it doesn't have like penis veins and no no it does just... it does actually yeah oh. yeah i think so too yeah it looks like a dick it's got balls too and, yeah. listen, balls on it. and listen she like she kicks you behind the legs and your knees buckle and then she grabs <laughs> you know, stuck on it what do you it do puts, it puts a gag in my mouth too <laughs> yeah, ball, yeah. I, I i would think the whole time even if it is rihanna i would think just... that i'm but wait okay. but what you're enjoying but is it, that you're doing wouldn't... this the point is that you're there with rihanna doing it but she's yeah. pounding me. That's I don't think I would like that. Okay, <laughs> that's that's wait. That's you not enjoying the feeling of something going up your ass or the idea, but not it, it's I would, not necessarily gay. I would feel degraded. Okay, I agree. I would, I I would, listen, agree. Some people, some people like. Feeling yeah, degraded. I don't disagree. I would probably feel degraded and emasculated for sure as well. If yeah. I it's not for me. But I can understand it not being gay for sure. Yeah. Ian's for sure going to get a whole bunch of gay DMs now because he's <laughs> defending. He's defending this. So Ian's our Every, token gay guy. No, I'm, speaking from logic. I'm speaking from logic only. <laughs> Ian gets all the gay DMs. <laughs> did you, did you, Paul, Paul, did you see the the timestamps in that last video? I did. Yeah, <laughs> I saw some of them. Yeah, did you see it, Justin. Ian. I see the timestamps. I seen it on your yeah. story. Yeah. Harry Ian, Ian thinks he's gay. Every single one, gay. like, Ian gay. Gay. Yeah. Ian squats, says he only squats because it's gay. You know? Can I tell you something? When I first when I first saw that, I'm like, oh, this is great, because I hadn't done the timestamps yet. And then you read them. I was like, oh, somebody did the timestamps for me. This is awesome. And then I started reading <laughs> them. It's like, it's like Ian's gay. Ian's gay story. Were you cracking up said, when you're reading them? Oh, yeah. Was <laughs> By the time I got to the bottom, I was pissing myself laughing. <laughs> That's so funny. Like, Ian says he fucked a guy. Ian's transgender story. <laughs> I don't know, man. If they, I think Ian might be right. I think if you're like, I think if you want to do it for any reason other than the fact that you're thinking about a dude, it's of probably course. it's probably but that's the okay. thing with anything, and that's the whole argument yeah. of it's only gay if you're gay. If you're fantasizing but, a man in any scenario, no, that's not the same thing. You don't get to Fred. You don't get to fucking ride both lines, man. Yeah. No, no, it's different. You, you're agreeing. No, it isn't. No, this is very nuanced. This if is the I'm, premise. If I'm getting a penis in my butt. It's different than getting a dildo in my butt from a woman. So but listen, take that clip. But if you're, well, if you're not, not that. for sure, <laughs> Brandon, you better not, not clip you, that. You just <laughs> threw a lob ball right there for that. You hit that out of the park. But like Ian said, if you're not getting a penis in your butt because you want a man's penis in your butt, we're not having the, if it's gay, you're gay debate. I don't give a shit. <laughs> okay. If I walk in a room and you're getting, Ian's pounding in your ass. Listen, you're gay. listen okay. okay. But <laughs> if, you, if you walk in and my fucking legs are wrapped around my head and Rihanna's pounding my ass, I'm like, maybe he likes Rihanna. You're like, fucking tap me in. 
All right, let's do one more question that isn't gay, and then we'll move on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Heterosexual question. Yeah. Okay. What do you think happens when we die? Too much. Next question. Yeah. That's well, what good. happened before you were born? Ooh, that's the uh, what's his name's answer. You don't know, and it'll be the same. Who's it'll that scientist? Hmm. Uh, fuck, what's his name? He's an atheist. I can't remember his fucking name now. Shit. Know. He's super popular. Yeah, I can't I, I, in my mind, like I'm not religious. I just picture being the exact same knowing of nothing existence just like yeah. before I was born. I don't remember what happened before I was born. I won't remember. Yeah. So I'm, I'm You're torn, just gone. I'm torn just, about this it. because I have so many people who are close to me that have passed in the last three years. Yeah, of course. But there's a. I do think there's a side of me that's like, yeah, that's kind of final. Yeah. yeah. But Look, I, 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 want, I want to believe that there is something awesome and sparkly and fucking great after it. I look, yeah. I want to, and I envy people that have that kind of faith and belief. I just yeah. don't have it in me. Like I just, to me, I'm like, what was it before we were born? Nothing. And when we die, it'll be the exact same thing. You know, I think this is one, Justin, where you say I walk a line on it. I'm kind of, yeah, stuck. yeah. I'm kind of stuck on this one. And it could be just an emotional thing yeah. because of I've course, man, it, listen, yeah. It's a, it's a lot less scary to think there's something after, you know, to think well, that there is, is, you know, something after something to look forward to something to reconnect with lost family. Like that's not, that's not why I think it though. I just think it, I'm not sure why I'm not sure why I think it, but I'm not scared of it. That's called being, faith. faith is like just not, yeah, really, no, no, no. no but okay. I'm saying like, I'm not scared of just thinking, okay, it just goes black. And then yeah. like, I'm not scared of that. Yeah. I just, maybe because I have an emotional attachment to people that have passed. I'm like, I don't yeah. want to believe that. So but that's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. the point I'm saying. Yeah. It's more yeah. comfortable to feel that there might be something, you know? Yeah. And I also know people who have passed that have passed with their faith and believe 100% they're going to see their loved ones again. Yeah. Is, it, is there actually some science behind it too? Like, isn't like when you die, your body automatically loses like some, There's a, an some energy, amount of energy weight. or something. There yeah. Is an energy, yeah. 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 And like some people who've, been on those near light near death experiences claim to have seen like there's a consistency yeah, among but their I, stories. But I've I've also heard scientists say that that's just neurons in your brain firing, and firing, that's what yeah. that's what that is light it? is. It's not an actual okay. like light towards. Okay, so that would explain yeah. why everyone gets it too. I mean, that's what they say their theory is. I'm not saying that's yeah. a fact, right? Okay, so, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's a shitty one to answer. Uh, let's see. One month later, are you feeling any effects from the stem cells? Uh, for people who want to know about the stem cells, I won't know what effect it had on my kidney until I go for blood work. And then we'll be able to tell if there was any real effect. Uh, as far as my face goes, I don't know. My skin feels smooth and Beautiful. tight. But mm, yeah. Um, How's your sleep? Is <laughs> it still better? Oh, you guys? Oh, good. You no, said your sleep I, was better afterwards. I, I kind of don't feel very different. You know, the only the only metric I really care about is if I go for my blood work and my kidney levels are better. I don't really care okay. about anything else. Okay. Yeah. Have you guys I, heard of this? Well, go ahead, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say my wrist feels a little better because I had stem cells on my wrist as well. So my wrist is feeling oh. better. So maybe that's it. Anyway, go ahead. Have you guys heard of the show Yellow Jackets? Yeah. I, I but I never watch it. Yeah. I just started watching it. It's it's good. You should watch it. Where yeah, is it? That... It's like a elite high school soccer girls soccer team that their plane crashes flying from like the west coast to the east coast and they like crash in the Rockies and they like it goes basically like what's that book again? Um, oh, um, alive, alive. No, 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 a... no. Like the the one we all read in school again, uh, with the kids on the island. Oh, um, oh, Lord of the Flies. Yeah, yes. it's like Lord of the Flies where they like fucking go crazy and eat each other and like get in cults and shit, and they're stuck in the woods for like two years. That's what it's like. <laughs> what yeah. platform? What huh. platforms are on? On HBO Max for US or Craving Canada. What are, what, are, what are the Rotten Tomatoes on that bad boy? Good. It's high. It's like eight, eight point something or eight something. Listen, really? I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, mayor of Kingstown. Kingstown. Oh, that was, uh, uh, that was a little slow. That's yeah. what. Uh, what's his name? No, the guy that just great. got hurt. Jeremy. Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy Renner. Renner. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, Tulsa King. Yeah. Sly. All the Yellowstone series. Yellowstone, yep. 1923, 1883. Yep. And I just started watching the Hugh Hefner uh, documentary. It's fucking great. Oh. Yeah, there's a Hugh Hefner like uh, not a not a biography. It's kind of like where there's an actor, but they also mix in some real life shit. Oh yeah, it's a biopic, I think it's called. I don't know. Anyway, it uh, or biopic. I, um, I just watched that series. Uh, fucking it's Blackbird, right? The Apple TV. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, it's fucking good. Yeah. You know what? You know what else is really good? If you don't mind reading a show, which is you know it's kind of tough. Is that German show Dark? Yeah, I watched. Dark. You know which one I didn't mind awesome. reading? There was the uh, the Spanish show. What was it called Money Heist? Money Heist. Yeah, there's a few seasons of that. It's good. 
I haven't seen that. Really good. I just uh, watched. I know it's not new, new, but I just watched the uh, the Terminal List. Oh, I haven't seen that. I remember that, that with I Chris. What's his name? Chris. Uh, the one from Guardians of the Galaxy. Hemsworth or Pratt? Oh, the the guy Chris that married Arnold with Chris yeah. Pratt, and he's like a a Navy SEAL frogman that like shit goes, and it's like a a redemption mm-hmm. story, basically like fucking killing all the bad guys kind of thing. It's fucking sick. Is it a show didn't, you, didn't you say you were watching the show? It's ten ten episodes or something. White Lotus. Didn't you say you're watching that, Dan? I watched White Lotus. You watch it? So good. Yeah, so good. <laughs> Did you watch both seasons? I watched both. The first one I thought was better, but they're both good. Yeah, I, I was I was pleasantly surprised with how good the second season was, though. Yeah, they're both excellent. Yeah. Yeah, it made me want to go to Italy, though. I want to go. Yeah. There. Um, and what I else? And then, oh, and then I just watched the. Uh, fuck, I'm too fucking baked to think of the names right now. What's the? It's uh on Netflix. Night Agent. I haven't seen. Oh, that's the new one that just came out. The new one on Netflix. Yeah. Is it's it good? good. Yeah, it's like an FBI, CIA kind of fucking. Mm, I haven't seen it. Mm. Uh, would you rather? Okay, last one. Would you rather lose the ability to cry, or cry every day for twenty minutes? <laughs> Justin, this is you anyway, brother. I was gonna say I don't think I cry every day for twenty minutes anyway. <laughs> somebody, somebody asked me my Q and A. They go, "Do you cry all the time?" <laughs> but they ask you that. I don't know who you've been talking to, but <laughs> they're both like not that bad to me. I don't really care either yeah. way, you know. Listen, there are some people that are, are like emotionally stunted and can't actually yeah, cry yeah. and can't feel things, and like they have lost loved ones and they can't actually get that release and can't mourn. And I think that's tragic. Um, I yeah, I'm 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 Listen, uh, I saw emotionally I saw, available. I saw my dad cry once in like forty years, so and he was yeah. just fine. So. I'd rather take the not crying. Really? Yeah, I, without it. Yeah. Every I, day is a lot, so I might get tired of it, but I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think I care. <laughs> I've never seen Paul cry once. I don't cry. I have friends with him for 25 years. I seen yeah. you. I seen Fuad come fucking this close to crying one time. I don't know if I've ever seen Fuad cry. <laughs> what? Oh, dude. When you and Ben were going at it in Texas, there was like, you're. Oh, yeah. I was like, gonna you weren't blinking because if you yeah, if yeah. you blinked, there was going to be a tear come down. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't fucking blink for like five minutes. <laughs> You've seen me cry, Paul. I've seen I you have. Like, it's been a while. I've seen you like teary eyed, but I've never seen You've you cry. Seen me cry, man. The day fucking uh, I got the news about John. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't know if I yeah. saw you, though. I talked to you on the phone. Yeah, we were at the gym together. We left the gym, remember? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Sorry. I really don't. I really don't cry that much, but I know Fu had seen me cry like eight times. Listen, really? uh, when we, the first, we, I've, I've, Justin's been signed to Hostile for two years now. Yeah, and with, in in the first year, he probably cried six times. <laughs> I mean, hey, I cried on Fuad's podcast like right off the hop. I had like a full yeah. episode crying about fucking Milos on the goddamn podcast. Yeah. That's I good though. Even, I, I I didn't even know Ian yet. It was like his second time on the yeah. podcast, and he's like, I was on it with Melissa. I was on it with I Melissa. Me and Melissa were on. I just fucking cried. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was like a oh, therapy yeah. session. It was like I was at my therapist, and Fuad was just there listening to me. I just I'm like, like yeah, yeah. I remember like, watching okay. that. <laughs> You know what makes me cry? Movies. I cry yeah. movies. Oh, oh yeah. I can't I even help it. But that's yeah. different, though. You have kids, and you oh, cry about well, kids shit. No, yeah, no it's not just kids stuff. Watching shows like fucking, like, like, uh, like America's Got Talent and shit. 100%, yeah. bro. The gold, buzzer, the people, gold like, buzzer ones get me all I'll cry, I'll cry in one episode every time. If really? I watch 10 episodes, I'm crying 10 times. You know, <laughs> I used to watch my dad cry like, like that all the time, and I just thought, I was like, like, "What am I doing on this podcast?" Crying? I don't like, I don't like reality shows like that. But I, I'll cry like at a storyline. I cried at the fucking Avengers uh, Endgame. So did I. But, like, it all takes <laughs> oh, yeah, is like dude. one little emotional right. scene, man. When, or especially when he came back as the old man, you know? Yeah, yeah, I cried. yeah. I cried. When he came back yeah. as the old man in there. I was like, I fucking cried like a baby there. Yeah. Oh, so wait, every I time, cried, my, my I cried in Logan when when yeah. Wait a oh, with, the, with his daughter? Um, oh, yeah, Paul. my kids know. I'll go to the washroom. <laughs> I want them to see me cry. Uh-huh. <laughs> bring, I don't think you, I saw you bring my your dad, cookies with you. I don't think I saw I'll, my I'll, dad I'll, cry until like I was like a like in the last five years. You know, I really? saw my dad cry one time. And I never cry, just get teary eyed. I've never seen no. him. I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I, I I found after I've lost loved ones and lost people close to me, it changes me, and I find myself a lot more vulnerable in these positions you know especially when you when you see like these people like you said on these shows where they have these big accomplishments and you're like fuck i know how much that means to them and like yeah. you see their family in the crowd it cuts to mom in the crowd clapping and they're crying you're just like fucking yeah i tell you what's really yeah, weird. Yeah, they, they I, I, I tell you what's really yeah. weird about that the more people i've had pass in the last three years the fucking worse the harder i've gotten 
Really? Yeah, it's made yeah me, I know what you're made, saying, Fred. It's made me different in, yeah. a, in a worse way. You almost like, think there's something wrong with you, unfortunately, right? Unfortunately, I thought that about myself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because you know, like when, when someone passes, you you think you know the expectation of what you're supposed to feel and how you're supposed to act. Yeah. And I think I did the first two times, and then it got less and less with each passing of people that were important to me. I had a similar experience, and I wonder, like, is there something wrong with me? You know, should I be taking this harder? Yeah. Well, because I, mean, I would talk to I would talk to Justin, he'd be bawling his eyes out, and I'm like, "Well, you make anyone feel bad." <laughs> no, I'm like, there "Must be something wrong with me." I'm like, "This guy's fucking." Yeah. I mean, do you do you think that's some like sub subconscious wall you're putting up just to, as a defense mechanism? I'm Could not be. scared. No, to like, show, I mean, look, you guys know me. I'm on the podcast for no, two years. dude. I'm not, I'm I know, not scared. I'm not scared to show my feelings. Like, no, I, for sure. And I'm not suggesting that. I just mean subconsciously, maybe you're, you know. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this, Justin. I think it's I think it's you, how you were raised a lot as well with the dad like the dad you have and a more yeah. traditional Arab family. I think that that kind of showing of emotions is different, and I think that's just something you grew up with, to be honest. Yeah, but even yeah. by myself, Ian. Like, like, yeah, but it's that's that's what you grew up as. It's it's in you, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think if you know, if you like, like someone like like Chris, like I'm not going to throw him under the bus, but like his family and Melissa's family, they like talk about stuff and show emotion a lot more. Like Chris will cry all yeah. the time, or Melissa, yeah, like sure. they'll let those well, feelings yeah. out and talk about feelings and emotions and cry all the time. And I yeah. started being like that more the more I was around them. I was like you before because my family doesn't really show a lot of like emotion like that. You yeah, know, that's yeah. that's how my that's how my family is. We're very yeah. open. Yeah. You yeah. know what? That makes sense because the only time I saw my dad cry is when his sister passed. Yeah. And he cried for like an hour. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. I never saw him cry again. And I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. So maybe that's why. Yeah, no, I... Not, like I, I raised a family that didn't like, you know, talk a ton about feelings. It was kind of just like, you know, we were very like open and stuff, but it wasn't like a, a touchy feely talk about everything kind of cry together kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Where like Melissa's family is a little more like, you know, talkative and emotional. And stuff are, like you, that. are you, are you, are you the type of family that like, if you ever hang up the phone or walk out the door, you tell each other you lo that you love each other? Oh, um, it's it's funny that I did when I was a child until I was like an early teenager, and then I didn't until maybe in the last four years. And then yeah. I started like I Melissa kind of was like harping on me. She's like, "Why don't you ever say I love you to your parents?" Like, do you know, yeah. you know, like did you used to say? It? I was like, I did as a kid, and I just kind of stopped saying it as I got older. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's there has definitely never one time been a conversation on the phone with my mom, dad, brother that I didn't tell him I loved him before I got off. So. Yeah. I, I, like I never that. used to, but I do now. Yeah, yeah. I, was like I, that. I don't know. I, I think it's important. I was like my that. wife's family's like that. Both my mm -hmm. parents, I was like that. But I think in my childhood, I remember if you were too emotional, my brothers would beat the shit out of me. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah with my uh, brother, my, my brother, it actually might be different because a lot of our phone calls are about business. And it's like, hey, what are we doing today? Got this, blah blah blah. All right, I'll see you there. Bam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. like, if I'm like, if I go to my parents' house and see my dad, I'm giving him a hug and tell him I love him. For yeah, sure. like and, I, and I could tell that my parents stop saying it when I'm saying it because they didn't want to like push me into saying something I felt like uncomfortable saying it like an awkward age or something and yeah. then I kind of drifted off but yeah no I've started saying it again what about, what about Melissa like if you leave to the gym and she's staying oh, yeah. back of course yeah sure yeah. Yeah. does that ever feel useless to you guys because it gets over say it over said yeah Listen, no. I, the way I look at it is like I'm I'm never gonna walk away from a loved one without letting them know I love. No, them. No, no, I, no, like, no. I would out. always like them to be the last thing they heard from me. Wait know? a minute, hear me, yeah. hear me, yeah. hear me out for. I'm not yeah. saying you're wrong. Just hear me out for one second. You know, sometimes you look at your wife like maybe you're sitting at dinner, maybe you're sitting there watching a movie, or you stop, or you're talking, and you say I love you, and you can actually like feel it when you're saying it. Versus mm -hmm. like, why? Okay, love you. Yeah, like love as, you, a, as a goodbye. Like, is it really fucking yeah, matter? I don't think necessarily the thought like. I, I understand there's a difference in emotion behind that because one yeah. is like a feeling that you're feeling versus the other one you're saying as like, you know, as a, you mean it, but you're saying it in a very different, like goodbye kind of sense. It's right. just more like routine, but yeah. I still think there's value in that, in that saying that, like being like the last thing you say to someone, if you don't see them again, is always like, you'll, like Justin said, you'll never regret saying that where you will. No, no, I, I'm not saying you'll you probably shouldn't. regret not, you know, I'm not you saying know. you shouldn't say it. I'm just and I also, I also guys... think that, Regardless of the frequency at which I like, I leave. I say, "All right, bye, Jazz. Love you." If I'm at dinner and I connect with her and I look at her and tell her that I love her, you, you can still discern the difference between. You can, you can yeah, tell right. You know, no, you no, know it's weird. Been... Go ahead. Sorry, Paul. I, like I came from a family that never said it to each other ever. Yeah. Um, like even to this day, like I struggle to say it to my mom. It's yeah. just weird. It's just awkward. Yeah. But Listen, my I, kids... honestly, I'm the same way. Like ja Jasmine's very wait, similar with wait. her parents. Where, but with my kids, I tell them constantly. Let them finish. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what it is. Since I since I had a family though, I tell I tell my my wife and kids constantly. 
maybe because why. you probably craved it when you were young and you didn't have it. And now you're pat, you know, giving could it be, you. but it's kind of like what Justin said. Like, I want them to know that's the last thing I said to him. Exactly. You know, sure. Do your, do your kids are your kids in the habit now of saying it like they say it back to you all the time? Yeah, my youngest one especially. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Justin, go ahead. What were you saying about Jasmine? Uh, yeah, I mean, they have it's they have a, a similar dynamic with Paul where she'll get off the phone with maybe her dad and she doesn't say it. And I was, I was like, man, it's just so bizarre. I mean, it's not, yeah. there's nothing wrong with it. I know they love each other, but you know, we'll leave on, on, we'll do Christmas dinner at her dad's house. And we'll leave in that. And she doesn't say, I love you. And I'm like, yeah. Well, and the thing is too, like, and Melissa could see that, like my mom, and my sister would say it every time they got off the phone together or like, you know, and, and, or that, you know, my parents were probably craving to hear that for me. And I was only not saying it because I had gotten a routine of when I was at an awkward age, feeling uncomfortable saying it. And now yeah. I'm more comfortable saying it. I didn't. So I was like, all right. And the first couple of times saying it, like, I remember the first time, especially to my dad, when you don't say it to your father for like 20 years. Yeah. You know, on the phone, you're like, all right, dad, love you. you know, it's like, it feels weird. He was kind of like caught off guard. And he was like, super excited to hear it, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Happy. yeah. Now it's like a routine saying with my parents. Yeah. Yeah. It, it yeah. wasn't for until I was like almost 30, you know? Yeah. It, it yeah. seems like, it seems like a small thing, but I, I don't know. I value it a lot. And I think it's, I'm, I'm happy Melissa put me in that position to like, think about that and get acting on that. You know, it's not yeah. like I said, even if it's, even if I wasn't getting anything negative from it, I'm definitely gaining something positive from doing it. You know, mm-hmm. like I don't think my life would have been worse if I'd never said it, but I think it's better because I say it. You know? Paul, you don't, you don't, yeah, you don't I say agree. I love you to your mom. I do more now than I used to. When I was a kid, never, never, ever. Well, how much um, do you say it now? Do you say it every time you get off the phone with her? Not every time, but at least every other time now. I don't Are see her as often as I used to. Are you going to start after this conversation? I might. Oh, yeah. If I know it means that much to her, but yeah, I never related. Mom. I but I never know. related it before to like the way I feel when I say it to my kids. I never related it to my parents like that before. You're for not some an reason. emotional person, though. I'm not, but with my kids, I kind of am. Like very I, different I like, with kids, I think. Yeah. 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 I just mean overall. I, I know you're emotional with your kids, but overall, you're not an emotional guy. No, I'm not. But my my family was really like um like dysfunctional. Like Except we didn't talk to each other. Separated. Yeah. 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 We didn't talk to each other. Yeah. Me and my family didn't. We don't like. You know, a lot of brothers hang out and shit. We didn't. Me and my brothers never hung out. I mean, they were they were older than me, so I think maybe the they hung out. But yeah, yeah. and I, I, have have a, I have a sister. We were very different growing up, so we didn't really even hang out. I think I think my brother and I. I mean, my brother was has been my best friend my whole life, and I think we're three years apart. And I think if even if it was four years apart, I think it wouldn't have been like that. Yeah, but you yeah. guys did a lot of fun stuff together that I wish I did. Well, it's interesting too, Melissa. Melissa and Chris because they're almost they're like four and a half years apart, and they've been super close their whole life. You know? Yeah. 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 yeah, but they come so from like, a very close family too, right? Yeah, but it's also like more of like you know she was the older kind of sister, and he was like the young. She'd be like picking him up when he was drunk from parties, and like they hang out. Like, yeah, like I think sure. it was just a very different dynamic, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's they've like her. That's close. like her baby boy. Yeah. yeah, they've always been close, you know. Yeah, it's weird. Me and my sister have been close, but it's almost like because she's like my second mother. Yeah, yeah. she's so it's kind she's, of like she's thirteen years older than me, so she kind of raised me like when my mom wasn't around. Yeah, yeah, not that my mom was around, my but like. Yeah. Ahead. How many Go siblings do you have again? You have a brother and a sister. I have three brothers and one sister. They're all older. My sister's sister's the oldest. Yeah. So yeah, you couldn't talk about feelings with my brothers. They would just ridicule you and bag it. Call you a pussy. My yeah. brothers too. <laughs> <Bag> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> all right, boys. Well I never had brothers to experience that, yeah. In saying yeah. that, I love you all. Love, love you too, guys. guys. <laughs> yeah, no problem anymore saying it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> See you guys next week. See you guys. Right, we'll see you later, boys. Bye.